Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original, presented by Bled HQ. Whether you're into cars, motorcycles, hunting, fishing, grilling, or any number of things, you've got the tools that you swear by. Have you ever noticed that the tool that finds its way into every job is a knife? Do you have the knife that you swear by? If not, it's time you got yourself one, and Blade HQ is the place to get it. They've got knives to fit any hand, any belt, any job, and any budget. Just go to bladehq.com slash oil and whiskey to check out their selection of knives. Today, we're going to be talking with Casey Wegner of Wegner Automotive Research and Manufacturing, right here in the blood. In the flesh. Big, big ass Casey Wegner. Can he sit on that side? No. He's making you look small. Dude. Yeah, he's dwarfing that's we, yeah. you. Yeah, that's, why like we, it. that's why we arranged it this way. I, I see that. Yeah. We've also got a new round of whiskey throttle and in the glove box. But first, it's time for On the Gas. In this segment, we want to take some time to shout out an individual vendor, shop, or company that's got their foot on the gas, doing great work, and taking their projects and industry to the next level. Jeremy, who do we have this week for On the Gas? This one's out of our industry, but super cool company and great marketing. Mike's Bikes on Instagram. Mike's underscore bikes underscore BMX underscore shop. If you it's just search mouthful. Mike's Bikes, I'm pretty sure you're going to find start, it. Start there. <clears throat> yep. So we just debuted the Good Guys OBS truck, 88, uh, kind of got a little Miami Vice action going on, plenty of neon stuff and we were looking for some sort of bitchin' BMX bike. So yeah, look at that. He did one for Dana White. Yeah. I, I got schooled on that. And we'll get into that because okay. when I found these badass BMX bikes, I drop him a DM and I say, Hey, that's the bike I want, man. I want that hot pink GT performer. I see it's for sale. What's the price? I'll send you a check. Send me the bike. Let's do this. Seventy five hundred dollars for that bike. Rightfully so. He does a hell of a cool job with them. But a little bit of sticker shock. So I pulled one of those like hot rodder things, you know, like the SEMA maneuvers, where I'm like, hey, dude. I'm going to get you <laughs> yeah. so much sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. I pulled a, a – are we allowed to say, hey, yeah, fuck it. I pulled a Randy Johnson on this, <laughs> you know. And I said, hey, you know, I'll get you a lot of press. And the dude was super cool. But at any rate, we we downgraded a little bit to a, uh, a dyno, which was affordable. And – uh and we're coming through on the advertising portion, so... Yeah, we're banging it out there, but it's a really cool guy. He knocked the bike out in record time. It's super detailed. The quality's unreal. I had one when I was a kid. I used to ghost ride that thing, like, you know, off curbs and just down into the bushes and stuff, and it never had the fit and finish of this bad boy, so it's like a hot rod. He brought that thing in um, to the shop for the first time, and... We've got a shop full of pretty badass stuff, and I think that pretty much stopped the entire production floor and had, like, guys run from across the shop. Yeah, it's the way it was in it's, Columbus. Yeah, It, it kind of, yeah. in hindsight, maybe it wasn't such a good idea because yeah. it kind of, like, made light of the truck and everybody flocked to the bike. But dude specializes in restoring classic BMX bikes from our era. You know, if you're in your 30s, 40s, chances are you grew up with one of these bikes. Chances are mom or dad probably sold in a garage sale for 20 or 30 bucks. Well, now they're worth like two or $3,000 so, or more. Yeah. So check wow. them out. Mike's Bikes BMX Shop on Instagram. Cool. Awesome. What'd you have growing up? Uh, I had a Haro after, but as a young kid, we were poor. So whatever I got handed down. I think the first bike, honestly, we had like, 12 was like a uh, yellow banana seat like with mini apes small front wheel cool. schwinn that's banana crate you, you didn't take the seat off but those back you? back in the 60s those were that's yeah everybody it's was, true it's a different era yeah this was not in the 60s <laughs> but those you couldn't jump those bikes really good and that's all i cared about was i jumping. remember yeah, there were sheet metal forks you'd yeah. fold yeah. those things phil had a rad bike i had the gt performer but i remember yeah. yours was like a little I had underground a, I had a schwinn yo and you can't find them anywhere it's a it was predator like, right? yeah schwinn yeah. predator yo Wow. Been looking yeah. for one and like they've never come up. That's a cool bike. Casey rode a horse. And I was going to, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, probably a lot of horses around. Yeah. My, I, I was going to remember. There. Damn. Whatever I could stay on two wheels, usually I opted for a trike that had a basket and something yeah. to haul my <laughs> shit in. Casey Wegner is the president of Wegner Automotive Research and Manufacturing 
engineering powerful and precision race and street engines, valve covers, drive kits, and more. Specializing in LSLT retrofit and pro touring applications. With humble beginnings on a 350-acre farmland in central Wisconsin back in the 70s, hence the horses, Wagner Automotive has grown to a company of 20 with a space covering more than 25,000 square foot right where it started. You can learn more about Casey and his work with Wagner Automotive by following the company on Instagram at Wagner Automotive. Casey Wagner, welcome to Oil & Whiskey. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, dude. Casey, yeah. you made a little special trip out here. It's nice to have you in studio. Yeah. How, long, how long of a ride is that? Um, today, it was actually, even with traffic, it was only about two and a half hours. It wasn't as bad as I was anticipating. Would you have made the drive if you had internet where you were at? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, luckily, Elon Musk got us this fancy new satellite internet. Damn. Starlink. And now we're like in this kind of decade of internet. Welcome. Yeah. The Amish are stealing all of our bandwidth with all their porn. But... Yeah, yeah. They, they just found Pornhub, didn't right. they? Yeah. <laughs> yep. They take a lot of it up. <laughs> Good stuff. Man. Ah. So we start with every guest around the same way. Tell us kind of where it all began. How how did you how did the get you how did you get your start? Um, I know it was a family business. Tell tell the listeners that may or may not know where it where young young boy Casey. Oh, let's see. What well, you know, like? So it's a family business. I we had to just do this <clears throat> for somebody else the other day, and um, basically, my dad was working at a speed shop down in Milwaukee, and um, we went to the grocery store one day and realized that nobody knew who he was, and he didn't know who he was, or whatever, and just said, "I'm getting the fuck out of here, and I'm going to go as far as a case of beer will take me." And he went. Um, up to where that was and the fishing was good and then bought a farm up in where we're at up in the country, which was about an hour and a half north of Sussex area and um, started, bought the farm, was doing some motors like drag race motors on the side for some guys. And, you know, then we got into circle track stuff. You know, there's actually Roger Friedman was his first circle track customer and he's still around and um, kind of a cool story there. And then he, uh, referred us to Bobby Allison and Davey Allison came up for the Slinger Nationals and they were, you know, they run into some engine problems. So they, you know, said, where can I get this thing fixed overnight? And they said, well, the only guy that's going to do that is Carl. He's a little bit of a burly, crabby guy, but, you know, we'll <laughs> try to, you know, get you dialed in. So he went up there on a Monday and got it fixed overnight and he won the Slinger Nationals on a Tuesday, which... Oddly enough, the Slinger Nationals were just where I was this week, Tuesday, which I thought was kind of cool the way that all tied into this. But, um, you know, still have a lot of motors. We probably had half the field running our motors. The track went goofy, and um, you know, but they still managed to have a pretty damn good race and a huge crowd. But anyhow, so Bobby Allison was so impressed with the way it worked out that next thing you know, my dad's driving to Hueytown, Alabama, and that's what started the whole Buick V6 era. That's why we had so many Buick V6 things laying all around our shop. And, you know, back when the 87 Buick Grand National came out, he had a lot to do with the development on that motor and then the Buick V8. I'm surprised you, know. you didn't try to talk me into sticking with the six banger in that Grand National. If, if there was more of those parts around that I could stand behind making sure that actually was a pretty badass motor that, that he had involvement in. So it was kind of a cool story. And then it just kind of erupted from there. We went into the NASCAR thing for most of our career from we were really banging out a ton. I mean, it was kind of, we had an unstoppable presence there for a while in the Bush series with the Buick V sixes. And then they came out with the nine to one Chevy you know, kind of V8 program, and then we evolved into that, and then it changed over to SB2, and kind of we eventually just faded back out of the NASCAR scene just because it was uh, kind of stressful, and the cup teams are putting a lot of their inventory that they don't need that's not quite cutting the, you know, cutting what they need to do in the cup series, so then they sprinkle it down into the Bush series, and it just flooded the market for us that we realized when we got out and started doing more in the local sh circle track stuff, and Street guys, honestly, I think my dad went out to SEMA, and that's when he saw you guys. And he's like, "Man, I met uh, he met um, got him 
what was your dad's name again? Neil. 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 Yeah, he met Neil. He's like, they got a couple of good boys out there, you know, and, and they're doing the stuff. He's like, they got some really, really nice shit. And for him to say that is <laughs> like a lot of people in the industry know, like he was, you know, kind of shrewd on things. And when he saw, he's like, they got nice shit. And the, the, being that the boys were involved, he kind of liked what he saw. And then that's when we started getting into the hot rod stuff more. And it was actually fun again. You know, not quite as stressful and we could go out there and there were no rules you know yep. if we want to make a thousand horse with whatever pounds of boost and however we got there or more until we want to just take it to the limit it was like yeah it was fun so we're back to kind of that point where you know he wanted it to see it go where it's fun and it was kind of an unfortunate thing like he, he passed away right around the same time neil did and you know it was like kind of a bummer for both of us so it was like you know, we're just doing the best with you know what we got kind of a cool the way it's kind of running in parallel that way yeah it is interesting man i remember when i first met your dad having not like known <laughs> I, I just needed like a little <laughs> heads up you know yeah, right. like a hey yeah, you know, yeah this is know. what's coming <clears throat> right I think the, the, the second phone call was a lot better i forgot who it was it you came to me like, yeah, so we got to talk to Casey, not to his dad. Like, they right. don't know incredible stuff, <laughs> right. but his dad's going to scare you right out the front door. Yeah, yeah, I talked to him the first time, and we were looking for a, a, well, a customer first talked to him on the Rampage Camaro. And I had sent him that, you know, to you guys. Right. And he calls back. He's like, yeah, I ended up ordering a motor from somebody else. I'm like, what's the deal? And it's this guy, the fucking old man. He was telling me like <laughs> this and that and fuck this and fuck <laughs> right yeah so then, he, then he comes down to the shop and uh i think we we're i want to say the first was it was that cuda the first motor that we did yeah and yeah, I, yeah I remember him coming over and leaning over the fenders and you know, basically telling me everything i needed to hear but not delivering it with great bedside manner but <laughs> looking back yeah. it's phenomenal yeah. i mean we were no, used to it growing up. We yeah, got, absolutely. Got from our dad. No yeah. bullshit. Why the fuck are you doing that? Nope, you don't want to fucking do it that way. Here's what you need to fucking do. Right. <laughs> and he was right about all of it. Right. You know? <laughs> because in hindsight, we probably should just put a fucking LS motor in it or something. <laughs> but, Different yeah. generation. Yeah. Hey, first of all, before we get to get comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can you can yank oh, this thing around all you want. Yeah, to. I suppose it's the only like, thing. I want you to get too comfortable. Yeah. I may be buttered up and yeah. too much. You can come. You can come down. There. I figured we wanted the duration here. Yeah. I just it's I can kind of like can't yeah. move. It gets good at the end. If we could yeah. maybe shrink your seat down. I just need you to be a little smaller. Oh, <laughs> I see where this is going. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> you blew past right past the Davy Allison and, and stuff there. That's that was it's Josh's boy. That was growing up. I mean, oh, really? Absolute idol. I mean, oh. from the Birmingham area, and I mean specifically Hueytown. You know, a lot of my life. And uh, oh, no kidding. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah. wow. That all, all I remember was my dad took me down there, and uh, Bobby was sponsored by Piper Airplanes, which was part of the reason I forgot the damn. We used to have like a newspaper that we came out with quarterly for Wagner Automotive back in the day that had all of the customer wins and what was going on at the shop because it was always growing and stuff. And right in the pictures were the original like add-ons to the engine shop. And I remember this one part was where the first, because we couldn't afford a lot back then, so we kind of had a makeshift dyno that had a, a drive shaft driving a rear end housing that was stood up on end that had a airplane propeller prop and then bobby allison and my dad figured out the pitch and did the math on what they needed to do so they could figure out their horsepower based on what pitch prop they had well here's young little boy me sitting under it like well that's really cool and then poof, my hat goes flying through the prop while it's on the dyno and my dad comes out jesus christ what are you doing standing underneath the fucking, you know <laughs> you know and bobby's eyes are like this big but yeah we had a lot of good achievements and there was a pretty cool video I mean, and so if you're into that much, then you probably know like the Red Farmer history. And, oh. oh, yeah, Red Red was, I mean, he's still alive, and he's he's a legend. There was a pretty heartfelt video that was out there that I think I might have shared that was uh, when that whole thing, you know, happened, like what Red went through, and it was kind of like what my dad went through. So when, when we were kind of coming up through it all, you know, we had, we went to Australia with Bobby and, um, Clifford Allison. Oh, wow. And Davey had, uh, I don't, I can't remember if Davey had gotten the wreck and passed at the time already, or I, I got the 
times mixed up, but um, Clifford was driving our rental car, and we had Dick Trickle down there. It was called Oscar. Well, Clifford passed before Davey. Yeah, so been, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, rem- I remember the Clifford one. My dad was probably closer with Clifford, Allison, and just, he's just a goofball. I mean, we'd be at an intersection, and if Clifford was behind him, he was trying to push, you know, one was trying to push one or the other through the intersection into oncoming traffic. It was just pretty... like Days of Thunder. Oh they, yeah, it was they, all they the... ran that whole town. I mean, all of them, Red Farmer and, and uh, Allison's and uh, the Bonnets. I mean, the grief, all of them. Yeah, yeah, like it was, it was hilarious stuff. I mean, the one time Clifford tried driving the rental car through an area and he forgot that he was driving on that side of the car and my dad had his arm sticking out on the other side of the car and he clipped the bus and about tore his arm off and then I thought my dad was going to throw Clifford out the window but um yeah it was always entertaining but he'd get to the racetrack and Bobby had a you know they're running around the wrong way you know so that took a little getting used to to get the car set up and just whatnot and you got NASCAR guys going trying to mix with boss car guys and um you know, the, I'm trying to remember what they, oh, so they came in, there was a wreck and the guy's yelling at my dad to, um, I just, my dad was a pretty big guy back then. That was kind of where he got his, you know, some of his legend from in the engine days was people remembered him at that speed shop in Milwaukee for, oh, he was the guy that would just load the whole motor in the back of my car by hand. He would just pick the whole motor up. You still and, do that for us. Yeah, I, I try, <laughs> but I, I, I see what it did to his back, so I'm trying not to let it do it to my back. But, yeah, he would, when he first got to NASCAR, like in the beginning, and, you know, if there's ever tech officials still around that remember this day, he would always butter up everybody in NASCAR. He was the guy that always brought all the, uh, Wisconsin cheese and meat and you know, he would always bring all the aged cheddar and everything to the track and make sure and bring it to the hauler. Cause there was prior always, to tech. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, so <laughs> just, a, yeah. I remember he had, uh, Martha Nemechek's, um, that's Joe Nemechek's mom. He, she would mess with him. She locked him in the port of John a few times and did some other things to him. So he wanted to get back at her. And so he put some big crotchless panties and nailed them up on the board, like the tech official board where all the tech releases were and whatnot, nails them right on the board and says, Martha's panties. And she's like, <laughs> son of a bitch, you know, I'm going to kill you, Carl. And, you know, just stuff like that, that always happened. I mean, um, Richie Bickle, you know, he's still around, you know, running around. So he just recently retired, but he's got some really good stories where, um, around my dad, you always had to kind of brace yourself for like your chest when you got backhanded in the chest. Usually you knew, you know, if you were on his, if you were on his good list, you had a permanent print of the back of his hand welded into your chest. That was just kind of like left there from when he liked you, just whop, you know, smack you or, um, give you a good nut shot right in the ball bag. And, you know, (laughs) um, but so did that, uh, Oh, Richie did that to my dad and he was so, you know, he, my dad wasn't ready for it. I remember he kind of looked at him like, I'm going to kill you now, but I know this isn't the right spot. So he took and um, came in his car right before he went out. And I'm trying to remember, oh, he took the steering wheel off, off the car. He reached in the car when Richie was just about to go out for practice at Daytona. And he reaches in, grabs the steering wheel out and just starts beating him with the steering wheel and then throws it as far down, you know, <laughs> pit lane as far as you can see. So then they're trying to go get the steering wheel out and everything. I mean, it was always entertaining, you know, and they would always mess with him because he was such a big guy trying to climb up under the fender well and work on the thing. And, you know, when they'd mess with him with the in there when he can't get out. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. It's story. So he got to the racetrack at Daytona with a 67, it was called the gray ghost. I remember that truck because it was just like my favorite little hot rod truck that, you know, he had a little 327 that he always tried to keep popped up and then he would always crack the cylinder heads on it. I'm like, why don't you just put a, you know, 350, whatever. He's like, fuck those things. You know, I can make a 327 outrun. You know, that's the best small block, whatever. I'm like, okay, okay, got it. And, and the gray ghost had a whole orange front end on it and a gray back end and, you know, some bigger tires, almost kind of like a drag car look to it, but it was just, 
my favorite little truck, even though it was kind of a pile, but he would drive that thing all the way down to Alabama and with a, you know, load full of motors and whatnot, and then get to the track. He got to the track the first time and he, um, walked in with these, you know, with a Buick V6 in his hands. So they said, well, he tried pulling in and they're, you ain't coming in with that. Like what the hell piece of shit truck and hobo coming in with his denim jeans and tore up shirt and whatnot. So he just grabbed the motor and carried it and said, well, where's Bobby pitted? And they're just looking at him like, like <laughs> over there. And he walks the motor all the way to the pit. And then Bobby chases back to the, you let Jesus Christ, let him in here. What the fuck are you doing? You know? And so then he's like, well, I'll carry all three if I have to, but you know, I'm just trying to get them to you. Cause I'm running a little late. And yeah. So that's, was kind of the thing that he got known for was just, this big ass dude that would, I, we got into it. Like when I, I thought I was a tough guy and I was trying to clean up the shop one time and we had the this big scrap trailer sitting outside and he just had all sorts of vintage stuff and everything sitting outside. And I'm like, a bunch of this is shit. We need to clean it up and make it look nice or whatever. And I'm, I thought I would make him happy that I chucked all this stuff in the dumpster and clean the area out. And then he comes and sees that I threw all this valuable shit away. So he's having me dig it back out and I'm mad and he's mad. And I threw a crankshaft at him while I was up in the trailer. And then he <laughs> takes and grabs a hold of a two bolt main cast iron block and throws it up at me. And I'm like, all right, done. What else do you want out of here? I'll take whatever you want out of the trailer. We're, you know, Chunk a block. It's like yeah. one of those movies when you see the two like superheroes, like yeah. the throwing concrete. cars at each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's King Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> He's chucking shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just yeah. need to see that. You've spent some time in that. We're we talking Legos at each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, uh, we've talked, uh, at Columbus, we were talking a little bit about, uh, about Talladega, you were telling us about that Minnesota race and stuff. And oh. you spent a few weekends at Talladega. I've tried to tell them what it's like on race weekend camping in the infield at Talladega. Oh yeah, a, you don't, you don't, been. you never know whose campsite you might wake up in. And you know, there's other. Yeah, we're on air, but you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> no, they edit all this out. Just, oh, okay, good. Yeah, all right, go, yeah. It it's good. like <laughs> it's like Bourbon Street during Mardi Gras, uh, with travel trailers and. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. It's wild. And it's hot. Yeah. Even at one o'clock in the morning, it's 90 degrees and that, sweating. That was what stuck in my head about Bobby Allison. I'm like, he is a, you just look at him, you don't think of much, but then you realize what a tough son of a bitch can drive around in a hundred plus degree weather with the heater on, with the windows rolled up in his car. And I'm like, I'm dying here. I'm trying to find, I mean, red farmer, he's, I don't, he has to be, close to a hundred now. Cause he was, yeah. it was nineties. When I moved, it was, it was, I know 90 or 91, he was still racing and had a huge handicap sticker logo put on the back quarter panel. So everybody <laughs> knew that it was him yeah. I mean, still racing short tracks and stuff like that. I mean, that's yep. wild. Yeah. That was you still got some hope at your age. Yeah. I, he lived a better life than me. There's no way <laughs> I can do that. Uh, so obviously being around that you've been into <clears> cars, <throat> for quite some time oh yeah the gray ghost what year truck was that 67 i think kind they of... made pt cruisers back then oh right yeah <laughs> yeah the pt cruisers there was a whole graveyard of pt cruisers that carl had put down and i mean he would always get why pissed off at me well he just was hard on him you know why'd just... you have one let alone a graveyard for <laughs> oh yeah he, he probably had eight i think of those things the best that everybody got the kick out of was one that wanted to live the longest was the purple one that he bought used from somebody that had a pink unicorn airbrushed on the back of it. And I'm like, please let me smash in this stupid ass. Like, can I just take a, so he's like, why does it fucking bother you so much? I'm like, because you're Carl Wagner and you're driving around a purple unit, a purple PT cruiser with a pink unicorn on the back. He's like, fuck them. You know, that's a, that's a guy confident yeah, in his masculine. Yeah. Secure. You know? Oh yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he would like, we'd go to the movies and we were usually running late, you know, cause he's working and whatnot. And, and, take all the, you know, I got to take my friends, my sister takes her friends and we're just piling the suburban. And if anybody could have made breaks that would have held up to Carl Wagner in a three quarter ton suburban. I mean, he had, we had the rotors nitrited and all this shit trying to get them to hold <laughs> up to like daily drive. Oh yeah. Yeah. He would just beat the <laughs> piss out. We would just blow a header gasket, you know, the head gaskets and whatnot constantly. Cause he was so hard on it. I mean, it's like you're approaching a stop 
stop light, stop sign, whatever. And he just, I'm like, we got to stop like coming up. And then it's like, what are you so worried about? And then the pedal was just two about, foot, was he a two foot guy or a one foot guy? Yeah. He was a one foot. I yeah. think you just mash it right through the floor. You think it's going to break the pedal off type of thing. And, uh, and, it's just and, so- and I mean, we'd get pulled over constantly. So he pulled over us the once and it was after the movie. And I, it was right in hometown Marcus. And I felt terrible for this cop because we're dropping all the kids off and he pulls us over for rolling through a stop sign. I think it was, which considering all the other things he got pulled over for, he was like, are you really pulling me over for this? So he gets out of the thing and the cops like, sir, get back in your car. And he's like, get back in your fucking car. And I'm just like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Come. And my mom's, you know, she's like, she's kind of like the saint, you know, that I would always try to keep Carl at bay and whatnot. And, that one, there wasn't much reeling them in. And then the cop, because this is all over the scanners, and the cop gets back, you know, like, Jesus, I got my dose of Carl Wagner for the first time. And, you know, the best was when, um, I think it was my sister. So when they built a house up on the hill, they, my dad thought he might need to go swimming. So he put an indoor pool in the place. And um, he never used it, but, you know, we did as, you know, it was right in our, getting into high school years. So naturally my sister decided to throw some pretty intense parties with there. Well, naturally all my friends and whatnot, they're like, Oh, cool. There's all these young girls coming over and whatnot and everything. Well, one night a bunch of them, um, got pretty rowdy that apparently somebody thought they should call it in to the cops. And my dad got back from a NASCAR late because his life was kind of you know, do practice during the week and get to the races on the weekends and maybe work on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and right back at it all the time. So we didn't see him a lot. So he, when he was came back, he was pretty tired when he was lucky enough to get home on a Friday night, he was pretty pooped and he comes in. And then that night was when every green light cop, I think that they had on staff decided they should come in every door of the house and, uh, try to bust some underage drinkers. Well, that night, I guess most of them had went home and whatever, and you know, they were all gone. So it was like, this was a bad night to do this. And one of the ones they came in was his bedroom door and there comes Carl flying out in his undershorts and <laughs> maybe one nut hanging out and <laughs> proceeds to grab him by the throat and start throwing people out of his house and pushing. And my one buddy was on his way back from, uh, taking, you know, uh, couple of them home or whatever and he's coming in the front door while my dad's pushing cops right out that door and he's like jesus christ what's going on? i thought your dad was going to kill him you know <laughs> it was always entertaining me there. Of, uh, you driving the big rig story uh, yeah my dad got some anger management uh oh <laughs> this is like got pulled over like best story. this is a really good story <laughs> <laughs> i got pulled over for driving a it was a dually with the uh goose right. trailer um you were driving I was driving, didn't have a CDL, didn't think I needed a CDL. Truck and trailer were way over the CDL limit. We had nothing in the trailer. Uh, it's five miles from here. Um, get pulled over, I get taken out of the truck. Um, my dad gets out. Sir, get back in the car. The oh, fuck I am. <laughs> Just right out, screaming at the cop, cigarette in one hand, pointing at the other. You know, if the, point, um, if the finger's yeah. coming out, you're in fucking trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You had a finger point? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's like a gun, basically. <laughs> the cop's getting all nervous, and he starts reaching for his gun. My dad said, "Well, are you gonna fucking shoot me? You're gonna fucking sh- take that fucking gun out!" <laughs> and <God> sucker. <laughs> yeah. Then the other cop comes around. He's got a taser. They're all yelling. Finally, he calms down. I'm like, "Dad, just get back in the car. Just get in the car. It's fine. I'm just gonna get the ticket. I'm freaking out because he wasn't known for controlling his temper all that well." Yeah. So yeah. it's a good thing it, it was, was you because it was him and me. We both be tased. Fucking <laughs> locked up. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So he got uh, he got significantly more tickets than I did for driving. <laughs> uh, yeah, court ordered anger management. And I thought yeah. you were going when you said the truck story. I thought you were talking about the coffee situation. The coffee. Oh, that's oh. another good one. <laughs> so you know when you talk about. These these old men driving, he drove like a complete fucking asshole. And driving the big rig, it, I don't know if you remember, see the our old toter home. It's a it's a forty eight foot roadster shop billboard, right? Oh yeah, yep. The name, the website, 
you know, phone number. Yeah. <laughs> everything. I see. Yeah. Phone. Not, so hard to, not hard right. to track down. So we yeah. get a phone call. Uh, somebody calls up front to, to make a complaint. They said that uh, one of your drivers cut me off in an intersection and then stopped flicked me off, started screaming at me, <laughs> and threw a cup of coffee at my car. So <laughs> I was on the other end of the phone answering that one. <laughs> We're going to have a stern it, talking to him. We've really? had a lot of complaints. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I assure you that is not the way we intend to run the business. And I will talk with that driver. Hey, Dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you used to, same thing. We used to joke like we had to get like Michelin cup tires on the semi because he'd be the only one. <laughs> Going 80 miles an hour down like a 6% grade. He's got a cigarette in one hand, coffee in the other, two knees on the steering wheel, and just zigzagging, like oh. passing everything. Well, you'd wake up because like, we'd, we'd switch off. We'd always cut it down to the wire as far as how long we had to drive to get somewhere. So when we're like shooting out to the West Coast, I mean, we'd leave a day and a half in advance and just switch off, the three of us. So one guy drives, somebody would sleep. You'd wake up from like a deep sleep in the middle of the night just out of like the sheer velocity you felt like <laughs> we're your body moving. yeah you're like what the fuck we are flying right now and you look down and you're like you're doing 90 95 miles an hour down a fucking grade just <laughs> and it's just like you said he'd fucking turn on the damn uh the serious radio so whatever is <laughs> love yeah whatever, love. whatever it was set to somehow whatever was going through his head he wasn't <laughs> listening to the radio but it is blaring and had to have a subwoofer installed, so it's got a sub, so all you hear the whole time is just, <laughs> <laughs> and it's serious love. Yeah, playing on heard Barry Manilow <laughs> with serious bass. radio. It's, it's a banger. Yeah. <laughs> was that an equal uh, split of the duties of driving? Everybody drove the exact same amount. Yeah. I've I, always wondered that. For the most part, it was, there was just specific times when certain people got to drive. Okay. For example, whenever he was hungry, he'd just pull into the, the Flying J for the JJ cookery or the, the Petro, wake Iron everybody skillet. up. All right, let's go. We're eating. I just went to sleep like an hour ago. I've, I've been up for like 12 hours driving. We're eating. Let's fucking go. All right. And then you sit down for, yep. the, for the buffet. And Phil here, I think he was, uh, Phil may or may not have been disowned from the family for not ordering is when you sit down at the truck stop oh you got to get the buffet there's you, nothing no, there's don't. nothing on the <laughs> menu that's going to be better than what they put out in large quantities i promise you that <laughs> you just sitting open <laughs> yeah, right. just just, you know, just a vat of just juice and lard you think then, you're going to yeah. find that secret thing oh you do i've heard the t-bones are good I mean, that, <laughs> no you get the chicken fingers because they come frozen they go in a deep fryer to kill whatever could be floating around and then they're back on the plate <laughs> he would I wonder if the pot roast is any good. You don't no, get no chocolate not. dessert then, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. true. So what was the transition then, Casey, between, like, your dad being the the man in charge, steering oh, the ship, yeah, so to you stepping in and starting to push your influence? Because you could see it in the product line, in what you do. It was obviously a more youthful yep. yeah, take so, on it. Yep, so... About, you know, I might have wanted to school, go to school for one thing. He wanted uh, me to get a mechanical engineering degree and whatnot. And he, he, at the time, we were spending a lot of money on, you know, cylinder heads was a big thing, ported. Everything was evolving a lot in NASCAR to where, you know, to stay competitive, you needed some CNCs in your shop. So he wanted to focus on that. I remember very well because um, we bought you know, our first CNC machines and I was always used to helping anywhere. And I decided to go back and help in the tear down area, cleaning up some stuff. Cause there was some hot, hot stuff. And he came back there and he's like, I didn't fucking have you go to college and do this and that for you to be in here, get your ass back there and get these fucking machines making chips. So that was kind of the last day I ever spent in the teardown room when I realized he needed to see some money being made or some progress so off. So it's kind of a win. You, yeah. did, you did go to school for mechanical engineering? Yeah, I was going to school, and then I had to actually, it was kind of still feel bad at this day because I had to cut it short because he was kind of like, you know, I actually did really well with the grades, but he needed those machines running, and I wasn't there enough to get them running. So I just did like the, you know, kind of two-year, um, you know, CNC degree thing to get him up and going and like a mechanical design 
um, it's worked out. And then we had a guy that um, kind of almost like a, I could say, you could probably say like a second father if you meet him. He was the guy that he had brought on to help me with the CNC stuff. And um, it's kind of cool because we started it together. We grew it. And, I mean, my dad was coming back with part after part after part to the point where if he'd have had unlimited funding, he'd have made every part his way in the motor. And he's like, he, he was like that close to buying a piston lathe. It a Sudagawa, I think it was a piston lathe at the time and um, still a pretty good. But uh, I'm like, Jesus, there's a lot of piston companies. We don't need to make our own pistons. He wanted to make crankshafts, pistons, rods. So, I mean, he wanted to make everything his way in the motor. And uh, we tried. We, we, we did our best to make everything. There was, I mean, there's like a whole, you know, attic full of different attempts at different things we tried. But, you know, the billet stuff is kind of where we shine the most. And when we um, got out of NASCAR and started doing some of the street stuff, and that's where... You know, we did the first, I think the first real street motor that we did was for Kyle Tucker at Detroit Speed that we did um, a hot rod it up for. It was one of the Stavola brothers, which was one of the guys we actually rented our shop from down in North Carolina, which was just down the road from our Mooresville race shop that we had. We had shops all over because back then we tried running our own bush team and doing different things. Yeah. You know, Bobby Labani raced for us. Matt Kenseth really? raced for us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was it was really you, good. You've got like the most colorful, eclectic ass. <laughs> oh yeah, there's, like, there's there's if nobody, when I remember it all. Nobody knows. Yeah. They just know you as like the dude that builds bitch and LS motors with really <clears throat> nice serpentine drives. Oh around. yeah, I mean there's all sorts of depending what I remember, but you know like <laughs> yeah, the, a shitload of Harley stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a really good relationship with Harley Davidson that we've been working, and it's really cool the last couple of years the racing thing that they got into the king of the baggers has been coming on strong and they won the championship last year and um now they want to win it pretty bad this year um and so we've been working on a lot of billet components and cylinder head stuff we actually right before i came here was meeting with a couple guys on you know some hot stuff that they want done by monday you know so you know they were around doing a podcast huh yeah but the guys are working on. We got a really good group of guys. I was thinking when you said twenty people, we're almost thirty people now, and I was like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make a note of that. Oh so no, yeah, yeah. Some of are ass kicked. <laughs> it's just like, oh man, it's, I can't believe it was, you know. So y'all were down in Talladega testing those Harleys too, right? Don't they, uh, they have a test track down there. They, yeah, I don't know if they. I, I know Daytona. I was down there for that. We didn't have the. It wasn't the greatest thing that happened in Daytona, but you know they've been winning and doing really good since and. It's pretty cool going to the track, but it's so diverse. You know, one minute we're doing street stuff. Then, um, you know, actually, I, yesterday, last night, I was meeting with some guys that were going to do, like, um, supercharged LSs for skater boats, you know, and doing yeah. some go-fast boat stuff there that they want to pull out the stops and try to see where they can really take LS platform with some really high-end built motors. And um, I'm kind of curious to see it, too, because I got a friend of mine that, I don't know if you guys ever got to meet Tim Fife. He was like pretty animated, you know, dude, he good local friend and he worked in, he knew a friend of his that had a, some big fast boats and whatnot. Rusty Rom was his name. And he, um, was nice enough to take me along on it down in the keys and go down to Miami. And I got a rude awakening for how much money these guys really have to pump into these things to try to push them as hard as they do. And what, what Mercury does to those twin turbo big motors is I'm like, you know, I don't know if I want to be too heavily involved in all of this because these things take a freaking beating. Like, I think the only other thing that might be harder on motors is all these guys with the airboats that push them in, you know, in that environment, we've been getting more and more involved in some of that, but I've been noticing there's kind of a difference. You got <clears throat> Wisconsin Midwest airboats where they're trying to go use them as either commercial work boats or like a, uh, you know, hot rod boat from the South. Right. You know, they build them a little bit lighter and faster, uh, way faster. But our guys are more worried about, you know, getting to that good carp spot, bringing in 2,500 <laughs> pounds of carp that they shoot. And, you know, they have these, you know, bull fishing contests and whatnot, but they need the horsepower to get them there. They need it to idle around. And it's not like you can use, you know, like a boat, how you can use seawater to cool the thing down. You got to just 
keep it cool. So we're actually working with some of these guys um, to try to get, you know, uh, the things rigged right. I don't think the rigging of some of those boats is quite where it is everywhere that it needs to be to try to make sure. Like if you guys installed it, you would know the fuel system that's needed, the air, sure. well, all the important things. And that goes on with the same thing like people ask us all the time, why don't you do more twin turbo motors? And we do, but I'm like, it takes guys – you know like doing like when, when I give else. Roadster Shop a motor, a little, you know, thing out for Roadster Shop, but I know that it's going to be installed right. You know, it's going to be put in and I don't have to worry about some other things. And there's other guys out there that, you know, they're for us, it may be <clears> like <throat> secondhand common knowledge, but there almost needs to be another book <laughs> written of installing LS for hot rodders or, you know, dummies, whatever, you know, that, that just all the basics that's like, duh, for us, that's easy. For them just so that it's less headache on our part when they get the thing up and going it's just like me asking jeremy dumb things about when i'm trying to build some of my cars that i'm getting built i'm like what do i do with this you know i feel like i'm more on asking but you know what it, for what it saves in the long run you know secondhand stuff for you guys yeah, that's why it's the perfect relationship i mean i bounce stuff off of you a few times a week i'm even if it's not something that's yours i still, I still <laughs> blow you up and bother you to Right. To help out because it's, I mean, it would take me a lifetime to gather that knowledge. And I'm fortunate to be buddies with you. So it's a simple text message. And 30 seconds later, I got the solution. So it right. works out good. You got to surround yourself with good people. Oh, yeah. Fuck with any rotary motors yet? <sighs> my dad may have. I haven't seen him there. But Mazda. Yeah. Uh, I was, Miata. I was going to ask you. Get step, you. get in there. Get, get out of the way real see, quick. Yourself. Sure, I didn't even know that a fucking Miata is a rotary motor. I don't you, think they do. Does it? No, oh, the RX. The RX. Oh, RX so you're yeah. swapping but he's, one? Yeah, he's, he's okay. doing <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I, I see where you're going with that guy. Phil's yeah. trying to accept it, thinking that it's going to lose its luster and we won't go to it anymore. It's still funny. Even if you bring it up, it's Dude, funny. Yeah, we're absolutely going to check. Yesterday, I'm getting gas, and I snapped a picture of this right down the street. Look at this bad motherfucker right here. It is... That's a. It's basically like a full blown race car on the street, John Player edition, Mazda Miata. That's sharp. Oh, four that's point a gentleman's. Four point roll cage. Look at that. It had like black with the gold stripes. Eight, <laughs> eight or nine degrees camber in it. Wow. I thought for a minute he was going to be hanging a right and delivering it. I thought Phil was <laughs> ramping oh, up the collection I mean, over there. Know, Phil <laughs> Phil never wants to take his to the country club on the weekends and stuff because it's kind of a right. But that one right there. You can, yeah, it's, that's got some yeah, that's here. You can pull that I mean, one. Yeah, up. people look at that and be like, "This guy's obviously like, it's yeah. like Pat, Patrick Dempsey or something." They're probably gonna think he's a celebrity. Swords. Here's a I'd here's say, a Jefferson for you. Keep it up front. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we actually have had yeah. Miata motors at the shop. Those spec Miatas for that road racing stuff we've had there too. It's yeah. The, the, I mean, it's funny. The latest You've had other ones than Phil's besides Phil's motor. There's been other guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> what else? Oh, we had Mini Cooper stuff. You know, we've done some of those. It's like you never know what's gonna come through there. I bet that you're talking about the knowledge and stuff and the the some of its tribal knowledge is some of its you you trust that customer. I mean, on the tech side of things, that's gotta be somewhat of a nightmare on I mean, dealing with the you know, with shops and builders and installers and you know, guys that just did it in, I mean, there's we we talk about it all the time. Our industry is it's it's such a vast array of yeah. qualifications of backstory of history of a guy doing it by himself i mean seeing some crazy thousand horsepower builds that a, you know a guy and his son are doing in their garage you know all the way up to you know 40 50 60 employees of guys that are you know churning out show cars and everybody do, does it just a little bit different and has a little bit different knowledge base there's no like set knowledge base for being no. a car builder you've got you need to know everything and like he said, you got to know the cooling system. You got to know the fuel system. You got to know the exhaust. You got to know all the computer right. and wiring and put it all together. And there's no like central location where you can just go to. No, generally you learn how the to put best a 1500 horsepower. Doing it motor, right? Really, really fucking it up. Yeah. And then having several to, times and having to pay for it. How, yeah. How but, many phone calls do you get that it's pointing the finger that like your motor's overheating? Oh, what did you yeah. do wrong with this motor? Because oh. your motor's overheating. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. We get those. I mean, you just got to try to help them walk it through it. You know, you always get a frustrated customer that's in the heat of it, and then you're going to get that call. So you just try to help them through it best you can. And 
as long as you're patient with them. I've been pretty good that some people towards, you know, on my dad's bad days, you'd catch him on the bad day. You fucking retard. You know, you never <laughs> knew what, what he'd get. Um, I always like getting the ones on, you know, it's rare now, but every now and then you get them on a Camaro, uh, you know, first gen Camaro with the spec chassis. A guy will come to me, a sales guy's like, this dude's upset. You know, it get, gets to me and whatever. Like, I got a Wagner motor. I mean, he's the best in the business. This is a 4.9 liter Whipple. You're telling me I got to cut the hood for this thing? This is ridiculous. You should have told me. I'm like, call Casey. He's the one. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> tell you. That's yep. a fucking huge one. Put That's a, a big nine one. Nine foot tall blower on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. a good, you know, again, that's a great part of the relationship that, that we have because there's a lot of times where it, these guys, it, typically it seems like the customers, they land on the motor a lot of times first. So Casey will feed me that information a lot of times so we can arrive at what's the right ride height, what's the right steering rack, can this fit, what oil pan has to go in it, and then vice versa. If we're setting up a chassis, you know, we can say, hey, I know this guy's getting a motor from you. A, Four and a half liter Whipple is not an option here. Right. So yeah. you can fit this, 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 or this blower under the hood. And we bounce a lot of CAD back and forth and scans and, you know, blower models constantly because that's a struggle getting stuff. You know, these explaining that, like, relationship of the ground. Yes. And the top <laughs> of the hood and the ride height <laughs> of a car. Yes. It's very difficult because you need, like. Those are, well, those are fixed in Those are your, time yeah. fixed in place right they're hard lines yeah they yes. can't they can't really bend at all yep yeah the ground stays the ground doesn't the ground move is. i've thought of i've always wanted to create a roadway that's like a channeled down the middle you know because <laughs> yeah. our the track width down. is pretty well set yeah. so if we could just like trench a couple feet down right you could yeah. you know one thing i want to make that um you know and of course cad cad data for us is huge if we could get the CAD data for, to get released, I should say, to get like Whipple's Blessing, for instance, um, on, because a lot of people are putting Whipple's in a lot of these. It's a good go to. It looks good. It fits the package good and whatnot. If you can get the CAD to have, you know, you have the plastic um, mock up motors, the, the, you know, you know yep. the mock up motors, and then have uh, one of a supercharger that they could put just to get their hood clearance stuff worked yep. out. I'd love that because the questions that we spend on the time of the phone, you know, and the biggest thing too is I hope people are listening eventually to this because the air filter thing, you know, people will call up, why does my motor, you know, I thought it'd be better than this. Okay. Well, a, do you have the, you know, the fuel system, right? But then you'd be surprised how many people don't know that a supercharged motor needs the coolant, you know, in a separate system than the radiator, you know, so, or even needs to be hooked up at all for us. It's like, well, yeah, why would they also they put it there? But some sure. people I've seen run it, and uh, and luckily they didn't blow up the motor, you know. But it um, it's it's got to explain some of those things to people. So I'll tell you what would be a good idea. Uh, thinking just <clears throat> now, and you're talking about the mock-up motor, yeah. mock-up blower. What if we just did a like cardboard origami LS with blower and put it all together and just sent you. Know, if you don't understand it, I'm just gonna send it to you. But fold it all and snap it together and sit and it see in where there. it fits. So yeah. it could be like a little project, like a father and son yeah. project. It could be just there. all like, you know, uh, laser etched out of cardboard. You fold it and put it together. I mean, they make all kinds of stuff out of cardboard now. Here not you go. A, not a, a bad idea. There's a mock up. Almost like making a buck, you know, where they enter yeah. a lot for a blower height. Yeah. I mean, what you guys do with the scans, scanning the whole engine bay and the hood, I mean, is, is I mean, for us, that's like, oh, that. If, if everybody could do that, it'd be awesome. Then you could get, but I mean, we realize it's tough. So you just try to take what you guys have learned from the scans and whatnot and pass it along to try to prevent some headaches down the road. Cause you know, for me, I didn't realize until I start talking to more builders, you know, modifying a hood is, can be some serious implications on that build as far as the look. But you do it, make it look good. I mean, yeah. It's super yeah. easy to just do it. <clears throat> Yeah, I've seen a good amount of them. <laughs> yeah, right. it like, just it, it takes time and experience. Like you said, you got to do it the wrong way first. When we were doing street rods way back when, I mean, when the LS stuff just started coming on, you didn't know any better. You'd take this that small little street and performance like rectangle air cleaner, and you'd put it right on the end of the throttle body, and it was right off the back of the radiator, smack dab up against the radiator, and 
it ran okay like when you first started it and then when it's got like 240 degree air just cramming into the that tiny little air filter it really doesn't work that good i think we i think honestly if you've got a background in street rods you've probably come in into it a, a little bit ahead of the curve with muscle cars because one packaging if you were able to package yeah. some of that yeah. stuff in those cars and then making them even kind of safe and okay to drive then, well, there's, dude, there's so much more room for activities in these muscle yeah. cars it's just Mo- <laughs> you've already kind of learned all the like i mean hood sides and making you know you're, you're limited so much on a street rod with size of radiator size of that muscle car is kind of like oh we've already figured that stuff out you know yeah, i mean the muscle i didn't think it would hit them as soon as it did but we already have people asking us about putting a bigger ac compressor on there right away i think oh they want it for a big car two you know sure. two acs in it but they actually want to run these <clears throat> killer chiller systems where they're using it to help cool down the intake charge. And I'm like, these guys are really trying. You know, I give them credit for trying at the end of the day. A lot of it, you know, that's the thing too is I want to try to make sure that these guys don't just, you know, when the motor leaves and, you know, they, they spent the money on a Roadster Shop chassis and they they really wanted to try to start out the project right, I want to see them finished you know, like that's the first thing they're like, what's the warranty on one of your motors? And then, I mean, honestly, um, it takes three to five years to sometimes to try to get these builds done the way the customer, the end customer really wants and the builder wants to see it done. So I'm like, you know, it is when it gets up and running, we're not going to stamp a, a year on it or whatever. We want to see our motor in your car with the customer being happy and, and vice versa with the whole package. And we want to see them driven. I don't want to just see him sitting in a garage and we just had a customer the other day that you know he's doing a nice build in a tri-5 chevy and a 57 i think similar to mine that i'm building and um and he sent it back and it caught fire in his garage and i'm like oh you could just cry seeing that you know and he's trying to do a nice build and i'm like you know we'll get it we'll get it turned around right away for you because you know it's the last thing he took some really nice pictures posted them on instagram instagram and whatnot and it was like it's gonna be a cool build um, and then you see it come back like that and you're like, oh. you just got to get it fixed, get it back to them. So, you know, they, these guys want to see it so they can actually drive them. And, and that's kind of where I'm at, where you see some of these cars. I've been trying to do some builds. I'm pretty excited about the pickup truck. Gotta, Pickups can be a great yeah, build, man. Got to work on Phil it. for some ideas too. So I'll see yeah. what oh, you're... Josh for the marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. So the black one's going to be bitching. I mean, that. That was like, oh. in, in hindsight, I wish I would have sold that to you because <laughs> yeah. that truck is so badass. But that's going to be a fun, great drive. That's uh, your wife's yep. truck, right? Yep, Amber's truck. So She's... what a guy. Took care of, got, yeah. got Amber a truck first. She reminds now... me constantly that I have a lot of a lot of toys and she needs one too. So I thought that would be a great, like, just ram that one home and do it, you know, try to knock it out of the park. And now, unfortunately, it was such a nice truck. Thank you guys for selling me <laughs> and uh, that it's going to probably be done before anything else that I have. So she gets to drive hers first, but, That's, um, yeah, but he's got you, a, gonna be, you're going to be miles ahead with that. Yeah. He's got a super clean. What is it? 86, 84, 84, uh, slant nose that, uh, Everybody's been telling him that he shouldn't modify it because it's so nice, but I was trying That's to explain that. To That's the perfect one to modify, but yeah. we got to think of something cool. Yeah. Something cool the, to do with these thinking. Mike Turax bought a ride line chassis from you. And he said, you know, Casey, I wouldn't have sold you that truck if I would have known you weren't going to do anything with it. And I'm like, okay, sold, you know, I'll get it done. You know, cause it, I thought about getting a different one and trying to do it to something. I just want to do a truck. And I think a lot of people are out there. The survivor series thing was like, when you guys started talking about that, that really hits home with, you know, you can drive the things like the 55 Chevy with the, with the single turbo 408 yep. that, you know, I, that was like, I'd be doing something and then Jeremy would make my day saying that we just beat the piss out of this thing. I love oh, hearing yeah. that, like we that just, they just are evil on it, you know. I think that probably speaks volumes for your motor. We would always joke that Dave's going to wear out the turbo as much as he's using it. <laughs> right. it just yeah. spool it down. He, oh. it, it was 30 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, nonstop for a 5,000 mile road trip. Mike Tyson it's, didn't beat the shit out of <laughs> folks. This yeah, but it's the way Dave does it's, that car. It's awesome. Not Robin Gibbons as much. It's awesome. That's what you want to do. That's what the car is meant to do. Why yeah. pussyfoot yeah. that thing around? I mean, that motor was, it, you couldn't 
put a motor to the test more than that. He fucking ripped that car, and it took every ounce of abuse. Yeah, but it, but it, the paint, the paint, and just the way it was all done was so perfect, so that you you weren't afraid to go hit a June yeah. bug like the way my fifty seven yeah. is finishing up. I'm I'm gonna feel bad driving it. I don't. I, I want to try to have something a little more like you can. You feel like you can go out and drive it. So that build, I think Jeremy's talked me into. You know, I'm a horrible salesman. I try to talk make, like I don't want to see the customers get hurt with too much horsepower sometimes, and just you know I try to second guess it. But um, you know, I want to try to do a twin turbo build because I just look under the hood. There's certain builds where you're like twin turbos would be perfect in here. A square. Uh, that thing's got the room. Yeah, yeah, the room, the heat. You know, all the things that go Chris along with Sears it. Just did a, a pretty sweet one, that white one. Yeah. Nasty ass turbo. Yeah, like you said, you got all that. You got big square box on the front yeah. for all the air you can possibly have. And then I mean, you've got all the room for turbos out behind the headlights. And but you talked yourself into all the bells and whistles. I started with a spec chassis. Yeah. I started yeah. spec <laughs> chassis, said... stock heights. So we don't have to cut the floor. Is it fast track IRS? Now? Yeah, we're fast, yeah, track, fast IRS track IRS slammed. Yeah. <laughs> turbo it's extremely <laughs> rare that he started with like a yeah. simple offering yeah you know you know what we could do but now that now that casey's opened the door now it's going to be like you know what cantilever would be cool Let's do carbon fiber do frame rails yeah where he got me was where he said that because i'm like no fucking way are they going to get that motor that we did for the buick to hook up and that's what like i've been hearing that it's running i can't wait to see that thing in action because i've been hearing that it, it just actually hooks did it that car puts the power down like you can't believe. What did you? I know it was like I didn't get to drive in it yet. It was like 16, 1600 something at, on an engine dyno. But yeah. what was it at the? What did it make? Twelve hundred. That was mid twelves. To to the tire through an auto trans is pretty damn. It made about twelve hundred, I think, to the. Did it to the wheels? I don't remember. I remember what the number. I think it was twelve thirty or eleven thirty. It's a shitload of horsepower to the wheels. Way more than yeah. it. But that's uh, it's got a bowler uh, annual valve body 4L80, and it's got our basically our stock independent rear fast track in it with a couple little tweaks, triple adjustable box coilovers in it. And that thing right now, it's got pilot sports on it, just 335s. And you'd be absolutely shocked at the way the car puts the power down. Like supercharged cars, you know, I mean, you remember the gasser that was, you did that. Well, it was LS3 that with the four and a half liter Whipple in it, the 56 gasser. Oh, that was a 427. Okay. Yeah, that was a, yeah. That thing, that, thing that car would just banged. Yeah. Blow the tires off it. I mean, they're also cheater slicks. Yeah. I, tr I tried to get, 50s. I tried to get a good video, but Jeremy was driving and tried putting me in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but man, yeah, the, the GN, man, we did, we were uh, trying to sort out the big tune the other day. I'm out there with Jake and he says, well, you gotta wind this thing out so do like a second third fourth pull and it the, the thing's like a, it's a fucking rocket ship and it never broke traction i mean we rolled into it but really yeah just Damn. squats hooks goes like missile yeah the, i guess i totally derailed the way you were asking how we got into it but i was kind of leaning into it there but with the cnc's um so uh Basically, we're trying to make our own stuff, and we start getting into the street things. And we did that motor for Kyle Tucker. It was a, it was a, I'd say it was just like a 416 LS3 that we did up, but it was kind of our way, which we learned quickly. Our way of mindset with racing and stuff might have been a little too aggressive. Like you get it on the track out for the autocross and whatnot, and it just a ripper. But for street driving. We had to try to detune a little bit and try to make things more driver friendly, change the cam and whatnot. So it was fun to fun to drive. And my dad thought, well, okay, well, that's kind of the path we're going. And then next thing you know, people want, uh, you know, 700, 800, 900. And he's like, from the NASCAR days, we were kind of like, you know, we knew what they could hook up in a NASCAR car that was really, really dialed in on a road course. Cause we did a lot of stuff for say like, um, Joe Nemechek had a good partnership that he did things where he set up the cars and let Ron Fellows drive these things. And Ron would just go out there and, you know, he, hell of a driver. You know, he had a lot of really good drivers, some that we still know today. Dick Danielson was a great friend of the families. And Dick will show up not really worried about what he's dressed like, what he's looked like. And I really wanted to try to get him in a good car that we could bring to one of these autocrosses. And what 
let him see what he could do because it's still pretty pretty good hot rod you know when you let him get behind setting up a car but you know so we learned really quick on the dyno when we were doing our front drive stuff i mean if you i look at back at some of our early designs when i got schooled really quick on doing the front drive stuff and i'm like you know, we, we quickly learned on in the CNC shop because my dad's like, I got a fucking CNC shop and I can't get the shit made that I got to, you know, get the stuff to work right. So I, I didn't like that reputation, so I had to fix that as quick as I could. And we would try to make it so that we could maximize what the supercharger's potential was. And then they made superchargers better, better, and better. I mean, a um, little plug for... Whipple, they, we just did a, a prototype 3.8 liter Whipple thing that that they're working on. That um, uh, initial testing, we hit like 34 pounds of boost. This was for my 57 Chevy that, with the fast track chassis, and it was at about 1,460 horse, I think, when it tried to oh, leave leave the yeah. building and <laughs> go through the ceiling. And we have to make some modifications on it. But um, you know, Dustin's working on getting all that fixed up, and we kind of patched it back up, detuned it, and he's implementing a lot of really cool things that we learned on that testing that I think is going to be something everybody hopefully can enjoy soon that I'm excited. So, you know, kind of what you get when you get some of those big, efficient superchargers like that is you don't have to twist them so damn hard. So well, that's stay interesting more. you said that. I mean, I mean, guys that are listening, it wasn't long ago, eight, nine years ago. I mean, a, thou- a true, true four-digit, yeah. true right. thousand horsepower for the blower. I mean, that was exotic 12 rib or cog and so like then like you said the accessory drive was the was the weak link there was just nothing that could do it i mean the supercharger being spun like it was and now i mean thousand horsepower i mean that's you're not really dealing with any kind of with especially with your accessory drive you're not dealing with with belt issues whatsoever yeah you're you're worrying about other things that motor does what it needs to do and all the accessories do what it needs to do i mean belt tension you know ribs i mean from cog drives and all that shit just not too long ago in 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 our era was yeah, it's a different funny. deal I mean, we honestly we almost take it for granted that when we call you in order like whether it's a 2.9 whipple a 40 whipple a car up blower a magnuson blower any of those we've had i think every edelbrock blower every single supercharger you know under the sun that you've put together we take for granted the fact that it just comes and it it works. All the things are in line. But if you had to just, if let's say you buy a, an LS3 long block and you buy a said blower and bolt it on, good luck trying to source accessories and make a serpentine drive work. And that's something that, like, I mean, it hats off to you because how the hell you keep track of all that, I don't know because you feel <laughs> there's so many damn blowers and everything's different. But to be able to get a motor with any supercharger with a complete serpentine drive that packages into virtually any chassis, any classic car, that's there's well, something an that's way more drive. organized than yeah. Market Street and performance. Is, well, going. Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but an accessory drive that works with all the things, it's it's got the proper belt wrap, the power steering actually works, the air conditioning actually works, and the blower is building the boost that it needs to. I mean, it's, there's a lot. His head's going to get bigger than his arms after this. Dry, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah the, the one kick in my ass the most, though, I will say, is the, the early vets that, um, you know, try to make as good as performance-wise, but it is like, you know, 10 Space. pounds. Yeah. Didn't somebody design a kit for that? For the LT4s? I think there was one designed. Yeah, I feel like. Somebody's making it, right? Somebody's trying to gonna gonna make it. Or <laughs> I, I heard. Yeah, it? yeah, I heard. I know. Yeah, right? They make a lot of accessory drives, yeah. don't they? That company. It's uh, yeah, yeah. very, very close. Yeah, huh. I think they were doing Coyote as well, weren't they? Yeah. The Coyote is done. Yeah, the I done. swear, Coyote's done. Right? <laughs> yeah. We gotta win. There's even Dino numbers to prove it. My customer, <laughs> my customers <laughs> beat me to the punch getting it up and running. For really? Yeah, they. We can um, sell them. Yeah. Did UPS yeah. lose ours? Did, right. Did not yeah. make it here. Yeah. Or. We're trying to make yours extra special. Yeah, he's doing like the really nice one. Right. Right. That's, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. That's the weakest yeah. excuse. Yeah. Oh no, yours is like gonna be really nice. Yeah, like, like really good. I mean, we had to use <laughs> a. Uh, it out. We had to use a LT5 tensioner. So GM, if you're listening, please don't discontinue those or whoever makes them. So, um, because that is a badass 
tensioner on there, but uh, we had to use that to try to make the Ford Coyote package as tight as we could and try to, again, we go with that again because the Ford Coyote supercharged horsepower numbers that people hear about are pretty impressive. You know, so we we had to try to make it so that it could hold up to. You got to put a that. fucking supercharger on a Coyote just to make it any type of fun to drive. Get out of its own way. Yeah, that's what I hear. Cubic inches is a thing. What are those five five liters? Five. Yeah, yeah. We, we're building a couple right now that we're going to do it a a five two, and we're actually working on some uh, Hemi stuff for a guy that puts Hemi's you know, some in Jeeps that uh, you know six hundred horse in a Jeep. I thought was. You know, that's what we did in mine with him. And I'm like, that's going to be awesome. And he's already like, we need to get this 1150 horse one done like right now. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, cool. This is going to be fun. So we got to try to do it so we can do it reliable, but that'll be pretty cool. And that's ready. A little help from Whipple on that one, hopefully too, and see where we can get it to last. But they got to live too. You get these Jeep guys with 40 inch tires. You never know if they're going to try to hook a trailer and go up the side of a mountain with it and whatnot. So. Hey, Whipple's a lot just of stuff that can break there. Keeps coming up more and more and more. I mean, everybody that's making anything look really cool and make power. And I know you guys use them all the time. I mean, Whipple's Whipple's doing it. We should do, we should have done Whipple for on the gas. Yeah, but next oh well. week. Next week. Okay. Whipple makes some shit for the Raptor too. I've been looking at for the, the yeah. twin turbo. They do the new Gen three. Yep. Tune and shit like that. Just to put like sixty or seventy. Sorry, horsepower. Hmm. Yep. With yeah. all these crazy horsepower numbers, what is like the good number that guys should look for for like <sighs> a, a good, reliable driver that'll scare the shit out of you, but not be insane? You know, friend of ours, they put it, they put, so I did a 95 Chevy pickup ABS that, um, I mean, it's so cool because you guys just did yours, but I did, uh, sorry, did, Ride tech stuff on it, just you know, it's what was available. We put it on and they beefed we it can up. We cut little. that out, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, it's a cool truck, and we did it as like a shop truck build with a three liter Whipple on it. And that one was 1165 on the crank dyno, I believe, at the time. Um, and I knew I didn't need that much, so we tried detuning it. But guys at um, West Bend Dyno wanted to see it, you know what we could do with it. So they did flex fuel E85 system with it. And I was, took it out for a drive. And that's the first time I ever showed up at a place that they're like, be careful. <laughs> what, what do you mean? They're like, just put your seatbelt down just now. Be careful. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, you know, hold to it. Kind of worried now. And like a moron, I, I, I chose that I should be a, you know, Harry monster man and put a manual valve body 4L80 in it. And that quickly got old trying to shift through as fast. Cause you just, Thing couldn't keep up with the power i thought it was and then i looked i'm like oh, something's wrong with this torque converter until i looked in the mirror and i looked realized that there's just black marks as far as you can see in smoke and i'm like oh we're just spinning the tires like o-rings off here this thing it's not really, really hooking up that but um that one right there and then they did a system on it that i think will probably start coming on into the hot rod market with us it was the smooth boost i think they called it where I mean, kind of like it. I kind of don't, as I don't want anybody to spin a supercharger too hard. You know, you, so the idea of it is it's an electric bypass, hmm. so it allows you to just bleed off the boost. Bleed off the boost, so maybe you could actually hook up someone because the superchargers is just insane instant torque, right? And especially you like where the tunability of a turbo. Or yeah, you come yeah. on, variable it's, boost controller kind of thing. On yeah, and I mean we get we get customers all the time, and I always try to you know especially if we got some listeners, try to get it so that you tell the, the engine builder what you want when how you want the drivability, that you got to really drive that home with um, so that when you get the thing and you go through all that work, we're not pulling the motor back out to do a cam change so that um, you know it's more like what you really, really want. Because everybody wants their cake and eat it. They want it to thumpity thump thump, and then they want... Um, it's a so that perfect their, their wife, and yeah, so that, yeah so that you like when you go through the stoplights and and kind of finding out you know like the weight of the car plays a lot into that if you got a light little corvette you're gonna feel all of that oh, you know, god don't even tell me we have to listen to that for phil all the time about it's a weight game 
And it's funny he's, he's even asking this question because he's been telling us 185 horsepower is all you need. 185 with, with power those to small weight. tires. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, yeah, all right. Right. It's a Miata yeah, joke. Right. It's going to take a while to yeah. make its way around. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely yeah, out. Because, you know, Miata. Yeah. Race car. <laughs> yeah. But then you got the look. Like, so trucks are getting so hot that we've been getting a lot of customers that want to do trucks. A lot of trucks, actually. And... But they want the look. So when you pop the hood and you don't want to look like a lot of LSs and LTs, when you look down in there on a stock LT or LS, even LT4s, it's so short and flat because what they were designed to fit in, that's what it was from yeah. the factory. So when you pop the hood and you look down in there and you're like, what, where is it? Where's my big badass power plant. So they've been actually having us put a Whipple or some kind of supercharger on it so that when you look under there, um, there's something there. Or what we did for some that maybe don't want the big, crazy supercharger power is we put like a tunnel ram style intake on it just to kind of fill the engine bay up and um, give it more of that, you know, something there look, you know, so that they can do it. But get rid of the new car plastic. Yeah, it just kind of, it's still a muscle car environment, so they may not want the thing poking out of the hood, but they do want it when they fill it up. When they yeah. But when you they, talk about, you asked a question. Casey completely neglected to answer it as far as like <laughs> what, what, horsepower? what horsepower is. So I've driven virtually every, I think just about every motor combination you've built. And I'll answer it because naturally aspirated 675 horse LS7 is nasty. It's awesome. Yeah. Supercharged. Honestly, I think that the LSA that you did for Rogan's Co or Camaro. Oh. Yeah, I that think it's pretty is awesome. is probably, it's the most usable ass-kicking horsepower that I think you can get for a street car. It makes like 850, 860, something like yeah. that. It has like 10 more horsepower than the tires can handle, so you could yeah. almost put it to the floor. Yeah, yep, you just can enough use, to respect yeah. it. Yeah. Yep, and it is power everywhere. Then when you get into the turbo stuff, I mean, honestly, like the, I feel like the sky's the limit. With the turbos because there's so much you're a boost addict though you just well, there's like that. so Come much on. tunability yeah but know? it's all like the question's convoluted because it depends on chassis it depends on tire Correct. size it depends on so many other things it depends I mean, on like if like, you have a precision turbo hooded sweatshirt right? <laughs> yeah. if you got that or a 1320 sweatshirt yeah 1320 sweatshirt you got the look you know yeah. you, i mean you put <laughs> flat billet you put 550 down. horsepower to the tires on a 275 rear tire it's the same thing as driving, you know, twelve hundred horsepower on a on a sticky three thirty five or three forty five. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's. I was trying to get a simple answer. If you're gonna go, yeah, yeah you're getting all philosophical all over no, here. We're I'm talking. Not, I'm, I was trying to be cut me, and dry. I know things. Right. I you've am you, smart. you've this already you've already purchased your roadster shop chassis, the correct chassis for what you're trying to do. Yeah. Those you're are the three. Yes, tires. Those are the three. But that uh, what size are those turbos we got on the? the grand national that can never is remember. a precision 64 66 which we kind of worked down from 76s and um it just kind of worked out really 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 well as far as throttle response and whatnot i mean that people may want the 2000 horsepower number and it is achievable with different things but we i guess we were just trying to be like we really want the customer to be happy so when he puts his foot in it we want it to react and not be Yep. That's Amazing. something you notice driving it is it, coming on. Absolutely. It's almost, it's like the perfect blend of, it's almost like a supercharged motor as far as the power coming on, like borderline instantly, but then it pulls like a turbo motor where the power just never quits. Yeah. So that's, I don't think you get, honestly, I don't think there's a better combo for something that would just make you like absolutely giddy. Giggle Sticky like a school girl. Yeah. yeah. That's, I was kind of, we always get guys that come in, they have to have a certain number, but then we always try to like circle back. It's like, it's not the number. It's like where that number is in the RPM range. Josh, Josh has been trying to say that for a long time. He's, <laughs> what do you mean? With the number. Yeah. It's not about the number. It's you don't, you don't need the big number, you know? I don't well, get it. No. We get a lot of guys that want to be lost on most people. You think so? We yeah. get a lot of guys that want the dyno sheet. So we make the dyno sheet and you just photoshop that yeah right well we that's the thing we you know that i'm not you can all watch things but we try to make a legit no fairy dust dyno sheet so that it's like this is what it can do within reason if you push it but you could probably push them harder than we push it but we don't want to wreck anything on the dyno because in the end it it's the customer's 
motor that you're messing with. So if it was our, like, that's why when we did the three, eight Whipple testing, it was my motor for my car. So we just pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and you know, tried to find the limitations on what we could do. And, um, hmm. it was an interesting thing to see what some other parts that we had inside of the motor did too. And, you know, it, you know, it, everything lasted and, and in the end, the street stuff, you do get some customers that are going to push it as hard as, um, think I'm not I'm not saying that everybody needs to put a set of like Chinese cranks and rods and stuff in their motor by any means here I'm just saying that you know some things hold up really well you know and um, it's just what they can use and different customers we just had a guy from Texas that carries around a uh, thing to measure his weight of his ethanol every stop and he makes sure that he's putting an E90 every time he fills up that car, and he's doing a third-gen Camaro that um, was 1,300 horse and 1,200 or so foot po- foot pounds of torque with a three-liter Whipple. Um, and he want he's like, I want a big cam because where I'm from, like grandmas have cams in their cars, so we you know we need big ass cam. So I don't I don't care about the drive. I just want nasty. So we we did, and it was impressive. That thing was thousand foot pounds of torque as soon as our dyno we set it i think it was down around that uh 3800 rpm maybe 3500 rpm it was already at a thousand foot pounds of torque and it just stayed flat across and went up to yeah i'm like good lord you know in a third gen like what do you in- I, I mean i i get everything that we do your business our business all of this aftermarket is is all different levels of basically a big dick contest i mean everybody's doing this for yeah. the most part for that but at the same time, like, after a while, like you said, you've driven every single motor that Case has ever built. I mean, take the Grand National, for example. Yep. How much more traction could you actually add to handle another couple of hundred horsepower? I mean, at what point is it just to to say, yeah, I made this much? You know, I, think, for, for I think at this point, pure when, you, drivability. when you break the 2,000 horsepower crank number, I feel like that's just it's just insane. Because that car, it's still on street tires. You know, you could put a sticky tire on it and make it stick. I mean, think about what guys are doing, you know, on the drag strip. 2,500, 3,000 horsepower. I mean, things go pretty quick. I mean, I've seen that have to go one way and he went the other. No, no, I'm not teeing. (laughs) Yeah, where were you looking? Where did you want me to go with it? I had, (laughs) this was an absolutely just legit conversation just talking about it. I mean, this shit is getting crazy. Yeah, but at the crazy. same time, people were saying it was getting crazy 15 years ago when you were putting a legit 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower to the ground on fuel injection. And at that point, it was wild. It was, well, this, it was nuts. You look at the OEs and what they were doing back then of what they considered fast. I know what we've considered fast. I mean, I mean, your LS1, um, you know, Camaro and the Fox bodies and what that was considered fast there with actual true horsepower. To where we're at now, I think the four bangers are blowing them out of the water now. It's absolute insanity. So I don't want to be. I'm not trying to be an old thud of being like, well, you know, too much horsepower. But it's a legitimate, legitimate conversation of tires have to continue to get better, which, suspension yeah, geometry and they are. have to continue to get better. You know, which it is. I mean, everything has to kind of keep up. It's not yeah. just crank more horsepower. Right. I mean, I think you just need, you need to know what you're building and what. What do you what, do what with you it? want? Because honestly, the majority of the cars we build are either like a bone stock 430 horse LS3 or with a Wegner front drive. Or, you know, or with like a 555, 75 horse built Wegner LS3. So it's, it's what do you build? What do you want? Yeah. I mean, we're trying to <laughs> take care of everybody and, you know, do the best thing that we think for our company that's going to be the easiest to flow through there, too. So, Trust me, there's a lot of things that come in that we, yeah, you guys could do, we could, we could do. And, but at some point you got to be like, okay, what, what is smart that we could do again and again, instead of making unicorns, you know, so we want to try to be able to try to do it again and again for people that way. But the, um, I had somewhere where I was going with that fucking derailed in my head. How much of your business is the, just selling front drives to guys already have motors versus building complete packages? Oh, we've been selling a ton of front drives. So that's, you know, because we try to help out 
as much as we can all the other engine builders too so i mean and i think we're, we're trying to push and it's where we have all the help too you know we, there's kind of a give and take there so that we still give the circle track guys the attention they need the street guys and, and try to spread it out as much as we can and, and finding good people i mean everybody i mean it, it kind of sucks and in, in our industry i don't know if you see it so much in the chassis thing because so much like a lot of young young people but um there's good the good old boys in the horsepower and the racing side of things a lot of really good guys are passing away or you know accidents whatever things are happening and we're losing all this stuff and if they don't pass down like you know i always think man if my dad was still around what he knew that we could still get out of him it, you know you got to try to get as much as you can when these guys are around and you know it's so cool like i saw you know jeremy's kids at the at the show this week and i was like man that's i got to get my kids to more of this stuff we all got to get our kids going to this stuff so your son there you know and that's that well, by the way you didn't who won, that out who won that sprint i was wondering that because oh i, I, I like, won that but yeah I you know he's gonna be listening at least 100 foot i think <laughs> i beat him by because i was i was rather yeah. like shit jeremy like i'm gonna have to go run around my block a few times yeah my knees are still fucking killing me <laughs> i knew it i that. knew i knew he had to be a little sore from that because i'm like if yeah, i would have done absolutely. that i'd have probably pulled something and get the record that out little fuckers fast <laughs> i'll tell you what don't help I mean, his ego out any <laughs> uh shit he was talking to him for 20 minutes about every you know, lifting and trying to get big and all that he doesn't have uh he doesn't have a self-esteem problem no no, no he sure doesn't no idea where uh, we're not going to that. worry about depression or anything like that. <laughs> that's for sure. Talking yes. about like chassis hooking up and everything else. I think one of the most phenomenon, you know, phenomena, you know, th was the um, his probably, vans probably off on the asphalt. Well, it was probably oh. that Ring Brothers Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, Jim called my dad, and those two had a good relationship, and Mike too, you know, and. You know, they fucked with me the whole time I rode along with them when we had the first motor in there, which was just a, you know, little stroker NALS and just gutless, P, you know, they don't hold back. Just let you have it. <laughs> so I was like, got it. We need it. And he told my dad, this fucking thing, we need to be able to melt the tires on it. So he just showed up with one day with a, you know, Magnuson supercharger on a, you know, stroke LS iron block. Of course, we need it to hold up to the abuse they're going to push with it. And, um, He's like, here, now shut the fuck up and put it in. I don't want to hear any more <laughs> about it. And then that thing, I never got to ride in it with the supercharger. I, I don't know. I got to watch it leave me. Like I had my ZL1 Camaro that was whatever, 850 horse at the time with some mods and stuff on it. And we were down in St. Louis at uh, the power, I think it was a power tour. And Jim and Mike pulled out. My buddy Shane was driving it and, um, uh, what the, what is her name um from their media group that was doing the filming um she was filming it oh, she I had i remember i think I, summer i think she wanted an autograph at one point yes yeah, that one the summer yeah. the summer fell down she was she was videoing the thing from one of those seats in there and then she fell down and mike was yelling hit it hit it hit it so i mean shane hit it and it was on an on-ramp and you know you had the speedway off to your right and I was following him. Next thing you know, I get this little puff of black smoke, and and poof, they're gone with the same. Like, holy shit! Like they, they're like they're really doing it. And it was it was a sweeping turn, and it really didn't have quite the best straight axle front handling. And Shane, it kind of started. They got into some some bumps, and it started hopping, and it would just er, 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 and get closer and closer and closer to the side of the median and everything. It's oh shit, we're gonna crash and. And Mike, everybody's falling down, sliding all over it. And and Mike's like, slow down, slow down, st you stop enough, you know, like enough. And um, he might have hit it a little too hard, but <laughs> I I forgot where where we were, whatever that year was. It was in a really bad area that they ended up. They took a wrong turn because they followed Summer's directions. Were set to the wrong location, and um, it was pretty sketchy where they were. Well, in some of that hopping. They hit the pan that directs the air. They they put like a, a shield to push the air towards the oil cooler and knocked it off and tore the oil cooler off. Which so when they came back where to the hotel where we were parked downtown, I'm like sitting down there parked. I'm like where the hell did they go? Like they were ahead of me. 
And when the oil should be here. comes off, so does all the oil. Oh, the oil. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm like, so I see this thing coming, and it looks like a NASCAR wreck coming off the track, and there's smoke and sparks and all this stuff <laughs> coming across the bridge, and I see him coming in. I'm like, holy shit, what, you know, what just happened? And they come rolling. I'm like, well, that motor's fucked, and, you know, like rolling in, and Shane gets out and shakes his head, and Mike's kind of shaking, and he wouldn't say anything. He got out, and Jim looks at me, and he goes, we almost died. Like, we, we pretty much almost died. I'm like... <laughs> Wow. wow. And yeah, everybody that that got out looked white. You know, so how many thousand horsepower nineteen seventy five Winnebago's have you built besides this one? I think that's I think it's that's gotta the only be the one. only one I'd but imagine. Just they could never get it to break the tires loose. It just huh. looked. I well, don't know if the chassis like was ready to split in half. In the back? Yeah. Probably like a GM chassis or Oh wait, I don't like know. Some... Maybe they did put coils. Huh? they huh. did i just remember it at first because i had to drive it to uh columbus good guy show the first time and when it had the first motor in it and i remember i don't know how i got roped into driving that thing all the way there but i guess i just wanted to see how it would do and we ended up having one bad coil go out on it that we had to replace so we're running on seven cylinders wasn't the funnest but um so we put a new coil on when we got there and it was like new but i remember the thing was so aerodynamically bad you could put a piece of paper out <laughs> the driver's window and watch it go forward. <laughs> so I was like, whoa. But I remember they fixed a lot of things in the chassis to try to get it to not kill people when they were riding in it. And uh, that was, yeah, that was bright. Fun builds. Yeah. What's the, what's the fastest car you've ever been in? Ooh. I'd say it was probably when I was on, they had the two-seater cars that they took out on Charlotte Speedway. And we got out to go out in there. I remember... That was probably the funnest time I ever had in a you know, racetrack, real car. Otherwise, other than that, it was probably when I took one of my cars at Road America and they let us out. I don't know why they let us out and let us go that fast, but we did. I mean, why'd you let us do it? Yeah. It's but so it was, bad. Yeah. He realized like, oh yeah, brakes, we need brakes and they got to work when they come in. So that's when you pucker up really quick when you start hitting a soft pedal, you know, and coming into a turn that hard. So yeah, need good brakes. Yeah, brakes are important. Sure. Brakes are important. Call bear. Go oh, there. You go. Canada corner comes up quick. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was definitely something he said about setting up the car. I mean, you guys set up your own chassis, so you know. And the, some guys, uh, I think they're out to lunch sometimes on setting up the chassis properly to make sure the stuff's dialed in. So when my cars get done, they're going to be coming here to get dialed in. Looking forward to it, man. Yeah. Where do you see the future going for Wigner? What's next? What's uh, on your plate? What do you want to tackle? <sighs> well, um, I think there's going to be a little bit more Hemi stuff in the future. The Coyote stuff is obviously we're, we're going to work on. And then um, front runner designs that we gave you. Yeah. Yeah. I, try to I think that's the immediate. We're, that's the immediate future. That's okay. like tomorrow yeah. when he gets back right. to work. Right. So like it's going to just. Nail that home. Right. That Josh is actually writing it down. As, right as, as <laughs> maybe some people don't agree, but I think we're going to do a big block Chevy with some new technology and, and uh, do a front drive for a big block where we do, you know, make it an new, LS. New, yeah. It's kind of like a ride from the it's LS. It's going to be like a little bit of an LS to fied uh, big block. More LT stuff we are going to do. Um, we had a lot of guys coming up to us at the show that, um, you said it too. I mean, they want to, they just want one phone call and they don't want to have to go shop all this stuff out and figure it all out. So that we're going to try to put a package together where we have, you know, the LT four with a cam and then we can sell it through you guys. So when they buy the chassis, they just buy it as a package where they even want the 10 L 90 trans with it, an LT four with a cam. So it doesn't sound quite so. Yeah. They don't sound tame. great. Yeah. And the front drive, the valve cover is just done. So when they get it, they can buy a running, ready to go package anything for like looking at the lt1 to be able to treat that like the retro ls motors to be able to do a top mount throttle body small block valve covers all that stuff yep yep we were honestly looking at that a lot of that plays into the lt which i'm sure you guys know as the ecus the trying to get the control system the holly we we, we use a lot of holly stuff um the LT stuff isn't quite where 
we wanted it to be. And I know there's other reasons for that. And just obviously just everybody's just busy with stuff and getting it done. But, um, L the LT one, like NA stuff, I think you could probably get there really quick and probably get to where you got to go. We actually were looking at, um, making a carb intake for the LT just to try to give it that, that look and even take it as far as just making an LT be port injection. So some people have done that and had success. I mean, um, get along great with Kurt Urban there down at Scog and Dickey and um, great, great guy to work with. And he, um, he did that LT eight, you know, twin turbo thing that was uh, with ethanol injection, port injection too, just to try to get the fuel to it. I think that's the biggest hurdle when people get into LTs. I just had some customers fly up from Miami for doing uh, some donk cars and uh, a lot of caprices. I want to know where all these caprices are coming from, but there's, a lot of Caprice guys. I think they were in Miami well, and like yeah. the grandparents retired exactly. down there. Uh, there was a uh, lot of years where they weren't really desirable, I think. Yeah. And now they're hot. Hot, they hot. They bring Josh, big money. They bring big money for a, yeah. I mean, a good like 76 Caprice <clears throat> that's good shape, low mileage and stuff like that. You're paying, they're hard to find. You're paying big money. But the one, first one day. First thing they said was they wanted a thousand horse. And I was like, yeah, there's kind of a breaking point. Yes, it can be done with an LT. You can make insane, great power with LTs. It just, when you're starting from scratch, you want to build, you know, from scratch. If you get your junkyard motor or your crate motor, well, that's different. You know, it, then you can kind of build on that and do some things. But to get, to get past 850, 900 horse and in starts involving a whole bunch of fuel things that can, you know, can start causing some guys some grief that if they would have known that they wouldn't have went down that rabbit hole. Whereas if uh, they're fine with 750, 800 horse with an LT4 and the fuel system that you come with it, then, you know, great. You know, we, just, we just do that. So we were going to focus our efforts on some simple packages for that that aren't quite, quite so overkill and see what we can do there, but try to make an LT look nice because i think our ls's look a little nicer than some of the lt's out there so we're going to try to give it some more look make a billet billet cover for the lt4 inlet um which yeah it's tough when you have a pancake supercharger to try to make it look retro yeah it's like a cookie sheet up on the top of that thing yeah i think the novelty of just using it in its stock form because it was new and kind of exotic gone. is gone so now it's at the point where they really need to be you could hand polish a whole lid so a couple guys do that on the instagram yeah you can do that it's a thing to do you get a couple hundred hours for the time spent in doing that you could machine yeah the whole thing probably yeah we're working on um a lot of cool new stuff that is coming for harley a lot of cool stuff that we're trying to do for circle track racing that's going to be Taking some pretty neat things that we got um, going on the c cylinder head side of things, manifold. Just trying to use our strengths with the CNCs, but we got to you got to realize like back to the good people are hard to find. Got to use what talents are available to you, and we've brought on some good guys that you know trying to you know try to bring young guys, train them up, you know get a, a be comfortable with you know our area can be a little tough where you know some people are like oh it's God's country, but we are in. Northern Wisconsin, it gets a little chilly in the winter. So some people are like, how do you guys come up? Like Roadster Shop, us, Ring Brothers. Like, how do you guys come up with all this cool shit comes out of the Midwest? I'm like, well, it's a fucking cold. Yeah, nothing to do. Yeah, nothing to do. So we just sit in there. Yeah, and hibernate. Yeah, hibernate and build shit or Kick get drunk. Kick ass all winter. You know? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think that's like a major competitive advantage for the Midwest and the Northern guys. Like, what the fuck else are you going to do. <laughs> right. oh, right. well, like if I lived in Florida, I'd be yeah. screwing around on the beach or doing yeah. something and you'd be you know, leaving work and going to do that, but yeah, no other choice. Sit around and think. In the lab, putting liquid bees, liquid liquid paper on bees. What? That's from Step Brothers. Yeah. I knew that was something. Hmm. Somebody's gonna come out with this. <laughs> Step Brothers reference. Mm -hmm. I think, I think we need to touch on the dreaded. I don't know if it's dreaded question, but the the question that constantly comes up. Especially, oh, he's going to say it. Well, it, it affects you the most. Okay, you put three it. inch 
primaries on a motor. No, yeah. you don't need it. You're going to run inch right. and seven eighths. Casey doesn't know what the hell he's talking right. about. The lemons other, make some. <laughs> other than that, yeah, the EV shit. Yeah. Where do you see it going? How do you see it affecting you? Do you see it affecting you? You know, I, I ask that all the time, and um, my dad was friends with a lot of people that had a lot of respect for him, so they, you know, watch what we're doing, you know, close growing the company and have respect for what we're still trying to do, carrying the torch. And, you know, I asked these guys that have been around and seen it, and um, Scooter Brothers and Ron Coleman that had comp cams, you know, they both told me both separate things. You know, you know what? Uh, Edelbrock's one of their number one selling things that they still sell today is a carburetor. And you know, when the last time a carburetor was put on, you know, a new car. So the we saw th- the carburetor facility. We were floored. Yeah. Oh yeah. They told us the volume on it. Mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that made me feel more comfortable. Um, some of the things that I felt bad, like we had a, we had a thing the other day that, um, you know, you get, you get these cars and you, you know, you want to try to do what's right for the the year and the era. And you want to try to make sure, but you want to make sure emissions wise, we don't get too out of control. And that's, that's a big, the big mark where I have a hard time with it when I'm like, well, what we're putting in there, even though it's a lot of horsepower, it's still way more fuel efficient. We're, we're using less dinosaurs and, um, you know, it's getting better, better gas mileage and less emissions than that carbureted big block that was leaking oil and smoking and everything else that's out there. So I feel like we're still doing the right thing for that. But the EV thing, yeah, they're fast. I think it's at the end of the day, it was kind of like some of the people pick on when they're, they're racing around and, and you can't take that away from them. They are fast, but it's like, I talked to a lot of people and the ones I drove, you just, it kind of lose all that emotion. You kind of need some of that grit and that noise and feel and whatnot. So, um, I've said it before. I think it's a, it's a really cool addition. It's a fucking horrible replacement. I mean, I would love to be involved in some kind of cool, badass performance hybrid. thing. You know, I think that'd be cool to, to do something on that note. <clears throat> I think there's a lot of merit in the hybrid technology. I think that's really probably if they're looking to do the best thing for the country and whatnot, I think that's where it's at. We did we did some badass liquid propane injection stuff that we got involved with Mother's Propane and Jim Holloway and those guys and Johnny Owen and the uh, um, the it was it was more of a liquid propane injection system and it might you know come around now it just takes the right you know again the builder you know you got to have the builder involved that wants to put the fuel system in the thing right that you know, we worked on a fuel system tank you know a lot of it really plays in a part but my dad traveled all around the world and he actually found a um here it was right in the states when we started working with johnny on a system that um at first we were like you know he had tried stuff from thailand and poland and all over you know some from germany and we couldn't make over on a 530 horse gas ls we couldn't make more than 340 horse, I think, no matter. We even pulled out some NASCAR tricks to try, and we may have got it to 360, but the, just the systems that were out there, the way it worked as a vapor, um, just didn't work. So then when we injected it as a liquid and we worked on some things on the fuel rail and the pump and the system and whatnot and how it, it, it circulates the fuel, we actually got it to make 30 horse more than we were on gas. And we're like, oh, we actually got something here. So it was, it was intriguing. So we put it in a truck, um, that we drove around for a while and, uh, you know, like a, like just an old three quarter ton work truck thing that we put on just to have a test bed. And the first thing we took it out and started doing burnouts with it and beat the shit out of it and put a bunch of miles. Johnny would fly in from California and I'd watch the goofy guy with his flip flops walk through all, you know, two feet of snow out in the thing. Cause it was always parked over off in the corner parking lot for him whenever he came to come and drive it and um he'd walk over there and fire it up and it would fire right up and he'd come running in he's like they don't the other systems don't do that they always hesitate when it's cold and now this is like 10 15 below shit that he's going out and trying to start this thing on propane and it would fire right up and i'm like oh that's cool now we just got to sell it you know that's the thing we're (laughs) we're really good about getting the shit done and getting design and getting it done we're just not great with the you know make 
you know, getting it, selling it and social media. We're trying to get there, you know, pictures and all that fun stuff. You guys are great at it, though, for sure. A full-time, like, crew to make that happen. Yes. That's the whole yes. second part of the business. Yep. Again, the right, the right people. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys are coming around to it, though. I think you really get, like, I'm noticing more of a brand. Yeah. I'm seeing more of your stuff, some and continuity it, with everything. It looks super cool. Yep, we're getting a lot of guys that are like, and I love your logo, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, it's a pretty old, you know, whatever. But I guess if you want it, we'll try to get some shirts out there. So we got to get some apparel. Well, you've <clears throat> you've done a great job, especially on the customer service. I send guys all the time, and guys that have never even heard of you, never dealt with you, especially a lot of the older guys that I've known for a long time. And I get the same phone call back after that. It's they're the nicest guys. They walk me through everything. This is awesome. And then when I got the product, I mean the unboxing, and this is quality stuff. I hear the same thing over and over, and it's the it's the quality of the people and the quality of the product. So that's off to you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for the referral. That's what was cool. That was a pretty solid service. It was. Right I know. I gotta yeah. buy him a drink, yeah. dinner, and everything. <laughs> now we come to the. Go ahead. Oh, I said I don't think that huh? he was saying much. What? Because... Huh? What? <laughs> but, yeah. You know the interestingly enough that your line of work, like motor builders, they're Whatever it is about that, it attracts some sketchy people. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah, motor builders. Yeah, that we there's hear. some bad fucking dudes in that right. line of work. Yeah. Out there. Yep, I can see how there is. I, I see like there's, I don't know. That's the same thing. Like my dad always thought, like, what is with you know? You got your car builders, but he's like, I don't know what the fuck it is with painters, but something that's in the paint. Oh yeah, you know, it's it the gets fumes. like. The fumes or whatever they get, like, there's some weird, but, you know, we see it in engine stuff, too, all the time. It's, they get, they get, hey, CNC guys, that's a new breed, too. It takes a certain guy to want to get, you know, nerded up on some of that stuff, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're, it's pretty fucking cool watching what some of these guys can do, especially the younger guys that they're just built different, where, I mean, I was, I had to put three monitors in my office just because I was like, man, these guys just rock on two so i gotta figure out how to utilize three better so i put three 31 inch monitors and now i can't see who sneaks up on me in my new office and when they come in i'm like whoa with your command center there and i'm like god damn right but <laughs> i'm like but yeah it's pretty neat watching what what some of these guys and we got to try to like that was one thing my dad always tried to instill was um we always want to try to provide the tools for the guys to do the best that they can do so give them the right tools to try to really kick some kick-ass shit for you and don't ever um hold them back from trying to grow their skill sets you know you'd always try to make it so yeah you want to learn how to do, do this just i'll show you you know what it was never like no you're that guy and that's all you ever do you know he always wanted to try to see him grow and do whatever they can and we always want to try to do the same thing with our guys that we get them to come through there it's like that's good. welders sometimes that can be tough i don't know how you guys find enough quality welders sometimes in that industry that's got to be tough we got some good guys it's uh <laughs> we've been been very lucky in that in that front for sure yeah i think a, the product line that the company that attracts a lot of good talent here you guys want to come show off for sure yeah yeah well now we reach the point we ask the standard questions i don't know if you but again, you just got internet recently up there in Wisconsin. So you might have never heard any of I these think this, episodes this is, before. This is on AM radio too, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah it's on weekly. AM. Casey's gonna whoop. He's gonna whoop our ass before we. You know, we're gonna have to limit his <laughs> bourbon intake. Dude, he's big, or I'm gonna exit here. Quickly. He can't take all three of us. <laughs> no, because I'm gonna run. Yeah, yeah so Bill's gonna you piece too. Up. I'm closest. Yeah. I'm gonna get fucking knocked out. Jeremy's too uh, fast. You know, yeah, I know he saw the speed, dude. Blaze <laughs> saw the speed. Uh, what is what's the first car you ever owned? Oh, and possibly a funny story about that car. And it can be a wagon. Well, there was two. Or a strong. It was kind of at the same time, I guess. There was it was a S10 Chevy pickup, it was the very first one, and had to take the tailgate off to try to get all that speed. No. You put a pro net on it? Fuck yeah, I put yeah, a pro net on it. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Pro net. I tried think to... Mythbusters proved that wrong. They did right. prove it yeah. wrong. Yeah. Tried to talk yeah. dad into letting me put a V8 in, and he's like, you'll shoot your eye out. You know, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 
wound that bitch tight and eventually she hatched and we had to get uh i think it was a <laughs> chevy chevy blazer that's impressive i like you, that one yeah you get josh laughing on a saying <laughs> yeah i think wisconsin and alabama ain't that far apart and he oh, spent a lot of time down in alabama yeah. as well so he's we, picked yeah. up on a little bit yeah. oh yeah i got some i got some guys if there was a way to call them in on we'll do that on the next show or something yeah. we'll start calling in some boys that i know that are just they should be like legendary in the industry for what they've done. You got to probably censor a few things, you know, maybe, but it's pretty impressive stories that they hear. Everything with one guy I'm thinking of is like in reference to a car. No matter what cocksuckering comes out of his mouth, it's got something to do with a car. Uh, favorite car movie. Favorite car movie? Well, God, Days of Thunder. That's the oh, yeah, yeah, that's that is, that fits fits perfectly. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. But my kid is keeps it, yelling at me for turning. He's like, "Turn that off!" I'm like, "What? Did you have to see this? I gotta catch him." Yeah, right, it's a right passage. Think. Do you think yeah. that there is a difference between Days of Thunder on like Netflix or Amazon Prime versus Laser Days Disc. of Thunder on DVD versus Days of Thunder on Laserdisc? Laserdisc was Laserdisc. The Laserdisc that's, it hits harder. I yeah, think. it just hits different, as the kids would yeah. say. Yeah, especially with with full blown. Dolby Digital Surround oh, Sound. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wong. Yeah. On a projector TV. That was Unsolved Mysteries. Rear projection. Oh, I think so. <laughs> Same era. Uh, current, affair. Yeah. current affair. And time for... Well, actually, yeah. the, whatever. My, my other first car was the Tri-5 Chevy that um, my dad bought from a friend of ours. Went through a divorce and he didn't want to see it, you know, so he bought it. And then... Uh, Oh, I bought it from him, and he was like, "Here, this is, here is do what you want with it." And it had a 400 with a 400 small block Chevy with a blower on it, and I and it kind of had a little bit of a gas leak, and uh, thought I would take it to. It just drove it all the time, sent it a few too many times. Oh, that's the one thing I blew up, four speed trannies like and rear ends like they were going out of style. So my dad would always sell all these. He had like a whole boneyard full of Tri Five Chevys that he collected, and he would go to sell them to somebody, and then he'd come out back there motherfucker stole another rear end housing out of the, you know, cause I would just break all these spider gears and just leave them sitting on the axle Swap in the back. The and yeah. And I just pull them out and leave them and then you know put it in. And he's like, took another one. So when they go to load it on the trailer, it's a act of God to get it up on there because it won't roll. Uh, I got now, one more go first. Ahead. Um, how does one go about weighing a scale to know that it's too heavy to pick up? God, yeah, this... you don't hear a lot of people weighing the actual scale. scale. Yeah, I don't know if you can weigh a scale. It's like throwing out a garbage can. It's like you 3D printing a 3D yeah. printer. Yeah. I think you you know it's too heavy when you end up with a scar that's about eight inches long. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of scale. Yep, that <laughs> definitely was. Uh, yeah, you don't want to lift up freight scales. The forklift that's five feet from you when you use that, that's what you want to use. You don't try to lift it. <laughs> the scar really doesn't bother me. It's that you've shrunk it into nothing. <laughs> you're, right, right. you're whittling away right. you're not near as big right yeah right gotta gotta get back at it right <laughs> thank you <laughs> is that thing like fully healed now it is it is it's 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 only it's kind of getting there i gotta fix the little tat to cover it up and now, i don't know if i should put like uh you know like the hinge you know, we got to do something tasteful with it or like you your, should put the little slider thing from the scale Oh it, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, or just you're a dumbass, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that might work. work. Yeah, something to remember not to do that again. Huh. You tore the bicep. Tore it right off. Yep, tore it right off, and then yeah. they just kind of hang it. Uh, oh, that's the other thing. If uh, anybody out there actually talked to a guy at Metalworks um, that did it, and I was like right away giving him all this advice that I could, um, of like go in, get it fixed. Don't fuck around, get it fixed. You know, because it ever it happens like stupid shit, and you always end up doing it. But it you lose the the pain goes away within a couple of days, and you think ah, well maybe I don't need to get it fixed. Well, no, you do. It's because it's not attached anymore, so you need to go in and get it done right away. But the um, you want a nerve block when they ask when the doctor comes in and gives you that optional question of do you want nerve block or do you want to be you know morphine you know the drugs and whatnot and i'm like my wife had the, you know 
couple kids with you know no nerd block or they're, they're, uh, so she can do it tougher than you think oh yeah these chicks yeah i found that out really yeah. quick when i had all the people standing around me at first it was two then it was four then it was six and then when it was a whole crew and they had the paddles i'm like what are you doing with those and they said well moron here decided not to get the nerd block so we your heart's trying to stop and um <laughs> we need to have this ready for if you're if I'm like, oh, well, give me some oxygen, you know, Jesus Christ. So <laughs> luckily when I came to enough that the starting fluid. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, give me, give me just a little pep here. I wanted crown Royal, you know, maybe something, but <laughs> I didn't think that would help. But yeah. And I did think of an, an idea. You guys can tell me if this is stupid, but like all the social media stuff going the way it is or whatever, I uh, bought four of those beer hats that have like the two mounts on each oh, side yeah, beer dispensing home. yeah and i i'm gonna put like and i'm probably just gonna have the guys do this for a day because you know we got some back orders we got to catch up with and whatnot but put two monsters mounted in there and feed it in and then video the guys just seeing how much they can get done when they're just nitroed up that'd probably be good for a lot of the guys in the shop and we get a lot of not good for the drywall no no, <laughs> no no yeah you give that you put that on kyle forget about it Busting through it, like it, Mr. Kick Kool-Aid, the man. The crap out of some drywall. Oh, oh shut up. All right, last question. You can go. Oh, it's the it's the uh, question that we ask every single guest, and I hope that you're come prepared because if you don't, we'll just cut it out because I'll be embarrassed for you. It's why, time for a pocket dump. Oh, I thought you were gonna say why is the roadster shop the best and tell us about, <laughs> a little bit about it. <laughs> it's time for a pocket dump. What do you have on your person? What? What's, What's in, in your, your pockets? pockets? What's in my pockets? Yeah. That's my phone. Your phone, that's it? That's it. I just turned it off. He's all, all he's all skeptical because he's close to Chicago here. He thinks he's getting robbed. No no <laughs> knives, no keys, no chapstick. No, no but gun. you guys have been talking about these knives that I keep hearing about, and I saw that one, so I gotta I, I probably need a knife. Yeah. Oh well, we can hook before, them up. Yeah, like before I, you leave, I, like, you can you we'll get you a knife. Yeah. Like what somebody's kid had a knife at the Columbus show, wasn't it? Your kid. That was, oh, that was my kid. That was Your kid? kid? Yeah, courtesy of Josh. Oh, Thank you, Josh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Wait, don't give one to my kid. He's 11. He's plenty old enough. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw uh, Wyatt when I was down there, and I actually was like, full focus went on all the scars and all the scrapes, and I'm like, holy, holy shit, this kid's all banged up and everything. Yeah. Like, You get his teeth, though. He does. His, his sister does not, though. Sister just oh, got yeah, she had a little diving. Yeah, accident. she just got two new ones because they were messing around in the pool. Dove in, shallow dove it, right into the teeth. Oh, right in half. Those are the perms too, right? Perms. Yeah. yeah. So we got those modded out. They look good as new. Ah, uh, well, thanks again, Casey. You can find out more about Casey Wegner and all the things that he's involved in. If you want to check out Wegner Automotive's Instagram at Wegner Automotive. Coming up next, we're going to break down some of our new favorite pieces of gear. All right, it's time for the glove box, where we tell you about some of our new cool new gear, guns, EDC shit, whiskey, and other stuff that we're into. Uh, this In the Glove Box segment is brought to you by Stillhouse Spirits. Stillhouse has six different spirits in their portfolio. Original whiskey, black bourbon, apple crisp whiskey, classic vodka, peach tea whiskey, and spiced Cherry whiskey. Stillhouse products are made in the USA, and the cans they come in are 100% stainless steel, so they chill quickly. Find Stillhouse whiskey at a store near you by going to stillhouse.com and using the store locator. That's S T I L L H O U S E.com. All right, guys, what do we have this week? Since you still didn't bring the Stillhouse cocktail, fellas, I'm telling you, the fellas, moratorium's fixing it right. Rome was not built in a day. Come on. All right, you can't rush perfection. I want you guys to ride. Well, surely to God, a cocktail was built in <laughs> fucking eight weeks. I want you guys to be able to ride your high horse for a little while and enjoy being at the top. He is so scared. He's calling in like experts. Because when I ride. drop that thing, yeah. that's it, dude. The next excuse is going to be no, like uh, the the fucking podcast hamstring is over. or yeah, I've got a hangnail. Or, yeah. yeah. All right. I've been sick for a month and a half. Who wants to go? <laughs> who wants to go first? What do you have in your pockets? Phil think, or Jeremy? How about you? You never go first. Okay, I'm going first tonight. You uh, it's kind of boring tonight. Just have my uh, standard keys, cigarettes, lighter. Uh, but tonight I am rocking one of my favorites. This is the uh, Protec Godfather in rose gold. 
I remember when that came out. Yeah, this is everybody a, in the shop got to experience it all day long. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is something just a little. You got a little dagger little blade fancy. on there, huh? a little nicer. Yeah, I don't see it's the a, dagger blade too good. often. I like that knife. I like the center shine. Yeah, it's a little fancy. Um, fancy, fancy. But for my in the glove box, I'm actually going to to gift our good friend Casey. He doesn't have a knife, so we're going to go with the Kershaw Launch 6, courtesy of Blade HQ. Bam. Look, Ooh. all blacked out. For me? It, for you. For you. For you. There you go. You can. Oh, 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 oh. Careful there. I'm going to hurt myself with this. <laughs> wow. Just, we got a couple gotta motors is, in order. Finish those before you start that playing. That is cnc Look at that. It's a, it's a little larger of a knife for a man of your stature, I think. Go ahead and hit that, hit that red button. Hang on to it now. Oh, it's automatic, so you can just let it fly. All right. Let her eat. Ooh, Damn. that is a nice spring It's got action. some yank yeah. to it, huh? Yeah. You can oh. show yeah. off to your friends. You can cut off some catfish up by after you get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's uh. the... Marcus on is just like, it's a suburb of Birmingham, I feel like. I'm telling you what, we are... We are Way closer than we thought. <laughs> it's Alabama, Mississippi, Wisconsin. Like right there <laughs> in the... Uh, Jeremy, what do you got? The usual stuff. Got a little different blade tonight. Something I've had for a while. This was uh, from one of our trips, Josh, to uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Oh, I remember. Remember that. that guy? That was a good trip, wasn't it? It was a great trip. I was a little rushed. A little bit rushed, so... One. I, I don't like know. That. That. It's cool. It's uh, you know, made in China, so not sure that it's the best quality blade, but it's artisan cutlery. Artisan cutlery brings. I don't know a lot about them. They but, they bring some nice stuff. But I do cool like looking. it. It's got uh, kind of the faux Damascus going on there, but the handle's great. It's got like a little knurled thing. Cool knife flipper. You notice I I just keep I flock to those flippers. You do. You like a flipper? Did you say but, it's faux Damascus? I think so. I mean, it can't. I think it was like. 60 or 80 bucks. They do a lot so, of like acid etching. Maybe that's like what that. it is. I, I, I like the touch that it's got the flag. Yeah. Yeah. They've been doing dumb, that. I feel them. dumber for not putting the flag on our. You got to put the flag, yeah. flag on everything, man. Made that in is, America. I like that. I'm t- it goes a long way. This, yeah. this could be a real Damascus blade. You think so? It, it I don't could think be. I, I don't think I paid a lot for that thing. Well, I mean, overseas, but it's you a, can do Damascus a lot cheaper. That's a good looking knife, though. It is. I do like it. Got some, got a it's bit got a little bit of that it. classic switchblade kind of look yeah. to it. But a little old school. Yeah. Good look. Other than that. Same standard. Yeah. Big, That's huge ass satchel giant, of the dad wallet. Giant wallet. You could see me kind of pitched over to my, <laughs> my left side here. Little spines. Does that Rookin'. come with like a uh, thing to hang over your shoulder? What's that? Your wallet. Uh, Maybe like a little Wait. clip to put. You can. Like double it up as a fanny pack. It's big enough. I feel like you could strap that sucker up there. Phil, you're up next. What do you have? Oh, I got a bunch room? of cool stuff. You got lots of cool stuff. I do. You only have so many pockets. I know some of it didn't fit my pockets. So I got it stashed over here. I had to put it in this little purse. I just got this guy. So I really like the uh, Civivi Elementum, uh, yeah. but I did not like the handle all that much. So I was cruising on Blade HQ's website. And they've got that guy with a wooden uh, set of scales and a drop point blade. Black murdered out, still a little flipper. Um, I, he's going to leave. It's not, it's not good enough for you. I'm so sorry. Well, he's so offended that you just made a large uh, Blade HQ purchase the other day. And I don't think our text messages, our emails, or our phones ever went off. I just went ahead and did it all by myself. I, it's quite obvious. Yeah. It's a nice knife. I do like the wood scales. Classic drop point. You said you're going to do a scale swap or aren't you? So I got a Tonto blade version as well with the uh, rubbed bronze scales. Look really badass, but they're heavy as shit. Um, so I might put that. I like the Tonto blade better. I might put those scales on the Tonto blade. But I got the tool that I can change that with. Good unprovoked lead-in. That one's, that one's <laughs> got some yank to it, doesn't it? It's <laughs> That'll get you. Yeah. That's a big yeah. block of the version. It is. A, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Don't lose Oh. Yeah, sorry. You get you get in a scowl, but you don't want it to look 
<laughs> no. <laughs> this thing, I think this is all. Oh. oh boy. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you are coming Sorry. up to Wisconsin, Sorry, huh? Ellis, <laughs> to, speaking of to Wisconsin. bring the heat. <laughs> What the? Not Sorry, even gonna, not even gonna wait. You, you go ahead. Not even gonna wait for truck yeah, stop. Yeah, just bring shit it all out. over my party. You go ahead, finish up. Are you see? And what so, else? While uh, playing around the Blade HQ website, um, started looking at other stuff and found this little guy, cool cricket little uh, driver. CRKT. CRKT. Um, the add-ons on Blade. Light HQ is where they get you. There's lots of either things. Yeah, but this was like 12 bucks or something. It's so awesome. like, yeah, I'm not going to not get that. So screwing around with knives, like you can never find those tiny little torques. You got to get that like Home Depot little driver kit. That still. What are you taking work. apart? Are you taking apart a deck? <laughs> no, you're screwing with knives. Oh, those little guys. Yeah. All right. I gotcha. T6, T10 okay. torques. So I found this little guy, magnetic top. Got all your bits in there. Cool machined uh, piece. Put those in. Good for a, a gun bag as well, because everything yeah, on the uh, in the gun world is usually some weird small torques that uh-huh. again you lose little Allen wrenches when you have them in there. So right. I like that. Uh, I'd, li- cool I'd like piece. to see that with yeah. a little ratchet action. That would be cool. That'd step it up a bit. The well, top's when you're magnetic. When so you're, you're doing your force finite movements on a knife, you don't you don't want the ratchet because you want that just that. Last little bit for a torch. Gotcha. You want okay. it? You want that is a cool little piece. Phil's bringing the heat. that. I think I feel like we should just call this in the yeah, glove box good. Phil's with, edition because with, with Phil with Gerber. Phil yeah. Gerber. Phil's glove box. Phil's, Phil's Yeah. Other one I got latest issue of uh, Classic Truck Performance. It uh, just showed up in the mail today, so this is not really mine. It's kind of like a shop deal, and then we're gonna tag a lot of other guys in with this one. Yeah, that's got um, a lot going on. Lot, lot to unpack there, Philip. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Philip. I feel like I'm in trouble, All right? Philip. Philip. It's usually, a, God damn it, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did Mom do that? Like, oh, it was, Philip, or what it was, was a, Jeremy? It was a whistle, and then it was a God damn it, Philip. Just like it was that. in more trouble. <laughs> Him, 100%. 100%. Until recently. We've switched. The roles. only reason he would have gotten yelled at is because, like, to yell at me that I did something that maybe he could have prevented. It was your fault that he fucked yeah. up. Yeah, so what so, do we have? Uh, the latest issue of crap, uh, Classic Truck Performance Magazine, um, chock full of roadster shop equipped vehicles. We got uh, Miranda Biltz, 55 to 59. I think it's 58, probably 58. 58. I'm just going to go let's with the range. Call, let's call it a 58. All right. So you got that on the yeah. cover. Badass truck. Um, inside, we got uh, our boy uh, Dave Delancey, uh, his square body, 77, black with the gold trim on a stock height spec chassis built by Chris Sears Customs. And then we also have uh, Premier Street Rides. We got there. It's 59. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. It was close. No, I'm just right. looking yeah, it up. Exactly. What Premier I said. Street Rides got their uh, 67 to 72. C10 in there, also on a stock height spec chassis. So standard Great. standard height. Standard height. Uh, we changed the name of that, and I, it has not stuck in for me yet. Dave's not De- exactly stock height. Dave, no. Dave Delancey's a guy we got to get on this podcast. Him and Casey would be good to go head to head. Yeah. No, cool. absolutely He's about not. Your size. The size of their two heads <laughs> going head to head? No, that's absolutely not right. As long as we don't like, have a hair contest, mine's all gone. So. You'd like Dave. Dave's Dave's a solid dude. Get an awesome car collection, and a super cool business too. Big, great guy to chat with. What year is that one? Let's see. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight. So the Never premier guys they Martin did that Martin. to uh, kind of debut their complete cab and body for the sixty-seven to seventy-twos, but. Good standard height spec chassis, no bed floor mods, no body mods. Drop that thing on and build a pretty badass truck. 60, 68. In addition to that, you know, the magazine itself, that's uh, old Tim Foss is behind that yep. magazine. Who, Tim's great friend, great mentor, known him since before I, you know, really even got in this industry professionally. Another guy that we got to get on here. Yep. 
and just shoot the shit with Tim's got some great, uh, I mean, if anybody's got some great hot rod stories, he's been around it for an awful long time. Oh so, yeah. That's what I'm rocking. Well, next up so. for in the glove box, what are we drinking? We're, we've actually gone yeah, to two bottles. Bag. We have. Oh, sorry. I put, I put mine back. Oh, you're good. Oh, let me get it. Yeah. Very good, good shit. Stuff. And the best part is it's in Louisville, Kentucky, Peerless Distilling. Yeah, we actually were just there. Like, we're going to be there. Wolf Air, yeah. Uh-huh. And when the we're nationals. there, that's one of the cooler distilleries to check out. Really? Yeah. yeah right there it, downtown. Right in downtown. It's like the oldest distillery in downtown area. I, really? I'm just going to say that. Let's just go with it. I know it's old. It's been around a long time. Old Forester, I think, is the oldest downtown. Hence the name. Right. Probably. But I, I, it is an, it's a super it, it's old one. Yeah. Are you going to Louisville? I to am. the Street Rod Nationals? Are you? Yep. We're going to be there. Well, we got to go because we're, we're going to... Get- we're all going to North of Bourbon, this awesome whiskey bar. He was a guy we had on the podcast. I think we're going to have to go Friday night, though, instead of Thursday. You think so? Well, we'll yeah. We'll go. I'll be coming back from moving Maddox into college. I'll be driving back through. Okay, so, yeah. So, listen, we'll all just, like, that's sit on our I ass on Thursday. Saying. Yeah. Let's just not do anything Thursday night. How's that sound? That, that's why he prefaced it the other day with we're not yeah, going Thursday. Sure. Yeah, we won't do anything Thursday uh, at Josh all. Josh has something And then else Friday, on. when Josh gets there. Then we'll all go. I'm just cocktails. worried, like, if there's something I could get behind the wheel after watching all those burnouts. Can't even look at us. And we go and do this, I'm going to be fucked up like polio and then try to go out there and try to go drive <laughs> shit down that. Hey, you got to be careful with that, too. The <laughs> What? Getting oh, fucked up like polio? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and they're going to do burnouts? That shit will fuck you up. Were you, you were there, weren't you, when Wyatt asked me about going to do burnouts? Did you hear about that? No. So... You right about the time we were hanging out, and you saw Wyatt over by the drags. Yeah, the dragster, the little slingshot. He's eleven years old. This does not look good. This doesn't reflect well on me. Basically, good thing you're going to talk about it on a podcast, then. Yeah, well, <laughs> wait, right. They're going to edit it out. Just like you six guys. people are going to be like super pissed yeah. off. True. Lindsay, so close your ears. He yeah. comes up. We're all sitting in, at the legend truck. Does <clears throat> mom know about this? She does not, and she's not. Don't you? Don't you fucking tell her? <laughs> don't tell mom. <laughs> we're all sitting we're all sitting at the legend truck it's 10 o'clock at night we're just, you know we've had several bourbons and he starts hearing that the burnouts are going on so he comes up and he's just harping on me to go out there and take the legend truck and do burnouts so i'm like yeah hey, dude you know, I'm, you know, I'm talking to a bunch of people and try not to dismiss them you're like yeah dude like nah i don't think tonight's the night well why not he keep, he's drilling me i'm like listen buddy daddy's had you know a couple of cocktails and I, it's not, it's, that's just not a good idea. Well, that'll make it much better. If you've had a couple of cocktails, that <laughs> nice. should make it much better. I'm like, did, did you seriously just say that? That's the wrong thing. Yeah. I kids. mean, right thing, but wrong thing. Yeah. My so for like it's a playing problem. darts or billiards, 100% the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dock in a boat. So yeah. back to what we're anyway, drinking. Dock in a boat. <laughs> Peerless. <laughs> You try to do that shit sober? That is tough. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, Casey went with the Peerless Double Oak. He got, he was given the choice to choose anything he wanted to drink, and the Peerless jumped out to him. Um, what did you think about the Peerless Double Oak? I loved it. Like, I kind of want to try them all. Are you a big, are you a, are you a big bourbon guy or are you just a drinking guy? I'm like uh, the, you know from Wisconsin, so I guess I'm kind of like got uh, the alcohol. Al- alcohol ADD. Yeah. He likes you know, the so alcohol. So I just want to try it. That's like just ask my wife every time we go somewhere. I'm like, oh, I have this, 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 and wonder why you feel like shit in the oh, morning. So that's the best way not to get a hangover. Yeah, just mix it all. Right. And then, that's a good. We just know in Wisconsin. Headache. I mean, I, I think that's everywhere, but to us, you have to eat a pizza at the end of the night. To make sure you kind of. We've done some parking lot pizza before. Solid That's urban legend. Sure. I heard that it's pretty fun at Roadster Shop and some of these things. So yeah, Friday nights we usually. Uh, You're not invited yeah, though, because that's when we do feats of strength, and oh. we yeah. pride ourselves on being pretty strong. And yeah, he's, like, he's pseudo handicapped now. Right. Everybody whip your ass. I don't. Right yeah, right the grip strength is going to be. He can right. still right hand it. John's looking pretty good right now. Yeah. So another. Can you oh. tear a phone book in half? That would be impressive. What's the, what's the thickest? Depends book on where the magazine. What about what, a Uline what catalog? What the county is? What about I mean, a McMaster <laughs> car catalog? Oh, that's the dictionary. You're not tearing that. McMaster car? Oh, yeah. No, nobody can. I no. want to meet the guy that can. 
Totally. What was the, what I bet you, Shane can rip one of those fuckers. Uh, Shane, John, might, yeah. John says he can rip a McMaster. Shane is fucker. Irish. You got to remember those Irish injured guys when they get pissed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah. John's got some Irish in him. He's got some He's ginger, got a little in, him ginger too. in him too. Yeah. yeah. What was the, he ripped something that was pretty substantial though, like impressively thick. Uh, a popular hot rodding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like six popular pages. hot rodding is like ripping a trapper keeper. No, it was. I thought like it a, was a Uline catalog. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, he can. He got some grip strength. Uh, we decided to, or Jeremy decided to go with the Thomas S. Moore. Uh, this is the cab cask finished version, right? Yeah, Thomas Moore. Thomas S- Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's usually where this podcast ends up towards this time. Yeah, yeah this is kind of yeah, fancy. I'm nobody. Just, I'm fighting my way. Yeah. You gotta understand, like we've looked at the analytics. Nobody's around for this. Yeah, they've long all into it. Okay. They're all gone. They this turned is, it off. This is just for us. Uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in Cabernet Sauvignon Cascas Cascas. Uh, ninety three, ninety five point three proof. Um, I liked it. It was a. Uh, Dude, that's it, that's honest. Honestly, that's an awesome review. Thank you for that. No, I that was <laughs> I wasn't finished. Oh, like a thumbs up. No, or it wasn't. Uh, I don't. I, it was very kind of middle of the road. It didn't blow me away either way. Um, didn't have really any bad taste or qualities. Um, it tastes like a ninety-five proof. It was smooth, easy I mean, to drink. Peerless. I feel like I could do burnouts in your parking lot right now. Let's, Let's dude. We can do that. How how we difficult how difficult that. is this to find? It's not too bad, and that's, I think that's the reason why we ended up with it because I've seen it a lot, and uh, it's a little higher price point, so I never never pulled the trigger. Define, they have define higher. I, where where are we? At with take price? A sip. I want to say it's like take a sip of that. Just seventy five to hundred range. With no ice. Just take a little sip. Yeah, yeah. It's in that seventy five to hundred range. But a lot of times the problem with some of those, which I think is my problem with that, is when they've got. There's like three different versions yeah, of it. That's, yeah. So you you don't really know what to grab. There's like yeah. the the finished in Cabernet. Glad I did. I think it's a good bourbon. I I, yeah. I enjoyed it. You know, it's got that. I, this this would be like probably a rookie thing to say, but you ever notice like when you taste some of these, it almost has like a flower like taste on the initial like smell taste. Some of these that are like flavorful. When a lot of times when you see them that are finished in the cab barrels and things. Like my, the powder my, flour yes, is what you're talking yes, about. Yes, my like my that. my palate picks that up, but it's good. It's an easy drinker. Doesn't burn. Yeah, all the cab finished stuff is always smoother, a little bit different flavor than your regular bourbon. Feels like it's cheating a little bit, but good flavor to them. It's when you can't usually can't go wrong with them. I haven't had a cab cast finished bourbon that I yeah. didn't like. I like this. I like the Jeffersons a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I try to let like measure it on smiles. How many smiles would you give that double like, oak? Like I'm starting to, I feel like I'm smiling more, and Phil might be smiling more too. You know, it's good task. It's like this it's like an, an eight, eight on the on the finished. smile factor. I'm gonna go six, seven, five, and uh, put it as a buy it. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing that as a buy it. I think I'll, I'll echo Phil's review on that. I think you're on the money. It's good enough that I'm pouring Ooh, another one. You are definitely riding with me. Yeah. <laughs> Both of you are sleeping yeah. in the parking lot. So who's driving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I brought a Chevrolet product with some more extra horsepower <laughs> so we can get up there. You need one of those Where you at, Josh? It'll, it'll drive you home. Oh, I do have a good idea that I might need Roadster Shop's help on, though. So Brainerd, where I told... I'm going to give it a seven. Josh. We got to go to that... We, have to get the gang together and go to Ro- to Brainerd for the drag races. And I haven't stopped thinking about it since you told us. Like it is the biggest party, and you'll find this kind of stuff at people's campsites. And you know, it, it people are just. What's the reason for the party? What's going on up there? It's a NHRA top fuel drag race, okay. and and everybody just kind of loves horsepower and drag racing and everything about badass cars. So. I mean, so there's like master craft boats that have been converted into horsepower cars. There's like supercharged things sticking out of the Damn. front of a mass car, a master craft boat oh, yeah. made into that's a Wisconsin four wheel drive chassis. Yeah. Well, that's Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Um, 
Um, we need to do that for sure. Yeah. When's the next one? It's uh, it's always in uh, third week of August. Oh, it's coming fire, up. Fireworks coming are up. amazing. Yeah, it's you should try to it's set a fun that up. time. The Street Rod Nationals is looking forward to that. Yeah. Especially like everybody's like since so it's a bourbon, legendary bourbon area, so I, I kind of want to. I'm not, some help sampling. Oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna take we're, we're gonna, gonna take you to a place that's gonna blow you away. I'll tell you what, I don't know. It's a fancy place though. You can't like I can't wear my jean short and my oh, you can wear, shoes. You can okay. wear yeah, it's yeah. probably not where your jeans I think we're gonna have anywhere. a difficult time making yeah, it to the show though. This year. There's a lot that Louisville has to offer. Yeah, from nobody's from gonna know if we're gonna standpoint. be there or not. It's a big show. Nobody's gonna around. miss us. Nobody's gonna miss yeah, us. Well, if we're well not there. we'll probably stop off. I gotta snag a few lemonades, but I will say though that is the coldest. Yeah, is. That's the only show I've ever been to in my life that we had to turn the heater on in the trailer, and we had shorts and t-shirts, so we were. It was so cold in in the show. That was so cold. We had to go oh, indoors. indoors. That we had to go sit in the trailer with the heater on, and then come back out to the show. It was like oh, it was that cold. All right, it's time. For one of the newer segments, we've only done a few times. It's time. But Josh, get you a glass and didn't pour you Dude. any? Oh, what hey, a fucking yeah. asshole. The bottle was over there. Here, let me, let me stop what I'm doing. Thanks, Josh. I'm here to get buttered. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I think uh, before you go into that, I think we need to address the elephant in the room, don't we? Casey is. Uh, what? Oh, shit. I can't believe you wasted it and didn't use it on a truck stop treasure. Let's tell so, everybody that's here and all the listeners and viewers about your shirt. Is that from the I-80? But where is Phil's? Like you Phil get, wasn't I there. Get one. We stopped off at, where, where were we? We were like, I don't know. I think we were in Indiana. We were on the interstate. On the, yeah, on the interstate truck stop. Coming back from Columbus somewhere. Was it a TA? No, I told you no TAs ever. Yeah, it was a shitty, it, that's the Mac tools of truck stops. Yeah, TAs. you don't stop at a TA unless you're wanting to get. I will say uh, though, if you guys want to come to Wisconsin and you want to, you know, pick up the ladies, you got to look more like me and Phil with the bad bods. Just saying. That's what they like. Mm -hmm. They I'm want right a to they want a good cuddler. Yep. Hmm. Yep. I swear. So, so we're just headed real quick. Look at Casey, and that's kind of what I'm. That, that's yeah. the body I'm rocking. Ka just wanna, oh, we're never going to hear the end of this. Who, Case, who yeah. is the comparison yeah. right there? Yep. All right. I don't know if it's this new T-shirt or yeah. what. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I didn't. I knew it was going to come. Uh, what the hell truck stop were we at? It was a. It was a Loves or a Flying J, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Well, sitting there on the bottom shelf, I saw this bad boy. I didn't even get to see it. He showed me a rolled up T-shirt. It gave me the nod. He didn't see it. So, so I, you got look, yourself something. Get a look at that. I didn't wear it all day today because I didn't wash it. And it smells fucking awful. Like a truck stop? Yeah, it smells terrible. It was on the bottom shelf. So it doesn't breathe well either. It's basically like... <laughs> I think nobody it's can just basically like print. It's basically like wearing a sheet of plastic. <laughs> I feel like. You can't even see it. You're going to have to stand, stand up, up and give it a... give it a. Go ahead, stand right. up. But so we can see it. Oh, sure. Sure. Look at that. The wolf, the... Everything at the uh, Aurora Borealis. Yeah, the Northern Lights. <laughs> Those are the Northern Get Lights. Scientific man. as shit over Look at there. That <laughs> <laughs> She'll get you. <laughs> but I saw that there, and I'm I'm saying to myself, I'm like, who the fuck buys a majestic wolf T-shirt, right? You as you're buying yeah. it. And then I I like I'm, I'm realizing this is not my first wolf T-shirt. This is my third <laughs> wolf T-shirt. So I have this like weird thing with like I, wolf t-shirts. Yeah. yeah, but I almost like I found myself originally buying them as a joke, but now I'm. I'm what kinda, did you buy this one as? Yeah, I think it, I think it was a joke. Just that you. I think. <laughs> but I'm almost <laughs> like I'm trying, yeah, very fashion forward. I'm trying to figure out if I just like actually like I'd, subconsciously well with your, really like these wolf shirts. How like much pairs well with your dream catchers? I'm asking you this. <laughs> Absolutely, this is it does. True <laughs> statement, right now. Yeah. Next podcast recording. Yeah. How much dollars does it take? How many dollars? That shirt. Yep. Some five inch inseams, and some of your weekend Crocs. Dude, the weekend Crocs are better than the no, fat kids. I want. I want better you to, than the fat. I kids. want you to come in 
with that apparel. Oh, I, I got no problem. I don't, I don't think I have any five inch inseams. Should we yeah, do or at least should, two and a half to three inch inseams? Should we? You don't have any five inch inseams? No. That's, I'll borrow that's your. super long. Dude, I'll borrow your gym shorts. You've got. So My daughter your, makes fun of how short his shorts are. Gym so, shorts. Do you think you we a, should do a, a recording in the next time we do a, a podcast? Yeah. We do it as weekend oh, yeah. apparel. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> dude. Because you. That's going to be a. <laughs> Yeah, people are gonna. There's gonna be a go. There's gonna be a GoFundMe page started for you, because (laughs) you 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 look like a homeless man. (laughs) You do. I like. Are are you the one with the shorty shorts, like at the gym, like with the like no neon colors and one time basically boxers. One time, and I learned my lesson because. A, what lesson did you learn to wear them every other no, time? No, I had a medical issue that day. Oh, you did. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had not, to take him to the hospital. Yeah, it was not good. I had vertigo fucking vertigo. I the whole time, I'm like, Dude, I'm pretty sure it's because of the shorts. Yeah, he's <laughs> fucking me. these like bright ass neon shorts, and I'm driving back, and I'm like, holy fuck, what is going on? Lance Armstrong I'm trying to play, said they were short. I'm trying to play it cool, but I thought I was having like a stroke or something. But dude, you like it's an allergic it's, reaction. To it's this. funny how Josh sits there on his high horse, and then he like just sneaks into the gym with his little tiny shorts on. <laughs> that he goes, you know, he goes from like his giant baggy mesh shorts to I can see there's there's one ball on one side, and right there on the other <laughs> that is, on the other oh, yeah. side is Spot the other me. one. Dude, those are t- I do not own shorts that short. Oh bullshit. Come on, hey, you're that tell me guy. I'm wrong. That was... Tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to sit this one out. Cause... Hold on. Okay, other than, so the shorts themselves, the neon ones, it was a one-time deal, right? But they had an, there was, there's an under lining to those that exceeds the five-inch inseam. Those are like borderline knee length. They're bike shorts underneath. Yeah. Underneath. Not on the top. What about some of those pictures from Florida? Well, a Speedo's obviously pretty fucking <laughs> short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you don't see field. me 100% yeah American oh flag speed goddamn right yeah. you don't see me just wandering around in that thing no you're just posting on facebook i didn't post it i'm caught in the background my <laughs> wife or her friend she, robin's a photographer you with caught, a, did you say caught in the background robin with a posts full star. american gladiators hey back it that. up robin You've posts never been everything caught in the background of a photo wearing speedos it's been like hey we're gonna take pictures Front and center you think oh hey I'm wearing Speedos. What about right, capturing right, this? I'm glad we've gotten such great content for tonight. There's no <laughs> shame in my game, man. Didn't say there should be. Dude, runner's body like yours, rock the Speedos. Rock them. You look like a geriatric old man in those short shorts. Honestly, like, it just, it's like, I feel bad for you. Like, the, the dude wearing the Speedo, you're like, all right, I get it. It's kind of funny. But like <laughs> you seriously wearing those shorts, it looks it's like off putting. They're six inch six inch inseam. Yeah, but I, not even with those big. Dodge Charger legs, those things hike up the a legs, little so you calm calm the fives. Legs, the legs are not ideal for the shorts. <laughs> and I'll give you that. That's <laughs> what I was that's what I have. Uh, and that brings <laughs> us to Whiskey Throttle. All right, now, if you're listening to the audio version, we absolutely recommend checking out the show on our YouTube channel so you can get a closer look at these videos that we're going to look at. Because it's going to suck listening to narrated videos. Yeah, Yeah. well, we don't do a very good job of narrating them either. So We just watch them and enjoy them. We just watch them, and you'll just hear us. There'll be a pause, maybe some music, and then us laugh and then repeat. Uh, The segment is called Whiskey Throttle, and we talk about some of the funny shit that we've seen online throughout the week if you have a funny video that you want us to check out upload it to instagram and include the hashtag oil and whiskey podcast dm us or email us and we might review yours on the show all right you guys ready first one up fired up man who submitted this one i I don't know we just have a we just have a long submit i think i might have found this one maybe we don't really give credit to them we just it's we just enjoy them yeah Right. Oh, you can go ahead and turn around. Oh, we got on this one. Oh, if you got Rocky playing, you know it's going to be good. (laughs) 
Good form. <laughs> nice. Oh, yes. And sticks Damn. the landing. Dude. Don't you, Honestly, uh, Wyatt's in. I, I, yeah. yeah, I thought for a like, second we were going to see that the can, real can life. Can Wyatt see that? Because in... Wyatt's going to do that. <laughs> I thought we were gonna see the real life Inside Out boy. I thought he was going <laughs> over the down. dude. I thought and the in the song I thought I thought he's going over the top. Do you remember back in the day though on that swing? Oh, the, that was a the, hard flex, dude. Good grief! If you launched off the spring off the swing, you felt like you were yeah. flying. Do they have those in Wisconsin? We got the swings. <laughs> Usually, we all break our arms. They're yeah. just rope swings, tire. I yeah. don't know exactly yeah, what's much. going on in this video. It's just it's just pretty funny. Uh, all right. Is that a grill? What the? We got some fire. It's a perfect timing for NSRA I, next I, weekend. So, uh, NSRA and whiskey throughout all that's like you've just captured it all right there. So that's, give, that's literally just <laughs> hanging that for throttle. The, yeah. Let's try at least try to give a description to an audio listener right now that doesn't see what we're so all explain right. what's going on. All right. So I don't really know how so it starts. You've got a fire, and then Josh is using his usual like mode of transportation, like a rascal, you know, it's for the elderly. Hangs the throttle through the fire into the fence. It's just Around a true true whiskey throttle, hanging that throttle. Cool, I like it. Bring it, bring me into it. Are you ready for this? You got this. Is a good one. Man. This is Jeremy submitted this one, just especially like you coming a cocktail coming off of as many bourbon reviews and and talking about some cocktails that we've had at, at recent restaurants. We actually have a couple of or a, a good guest coming up in several weeks that knows how to make a drink. This, however, I it's I don't know a lot about making drinks. It seems as though this is the lead bartender at TGI Fridays. I think. All right. Everything's mashed up. Go ahead and put like two, maybe three dashes of your bitters. <laughs> then we're gonna get an ice cup. And we'll fill it all the way up with ice. And then you're gonna put three ounces of bourbon in. One, so this two, is a pretty strong three. Drink. <laughs> 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 was kind of from prior generations but it actually is really good and it's similar to like a manhattan but you know the orange in it makes it even better i think so of course you want to make sure all those flavors get mixed up so you're going to go ahead and kind of ooh, ooh. Pour back and what? forth oh. make messes all over the place and so you get it all mixed up yeah and you have the orange brine and the cherry all mixed up with the bourbon that's and the a hell of a cocktail it seems like that. That's tasty. Jim Beam and the Rocks with an orange. Yeah, basically, <laughs> see, totally Marcus style yeah. right Half there. Half a bottle right. of Jim Beam, some bitters and an orange. <laughs> Where's vocal on that one? Uh, all right. Next up. We've all been there. This one doesn't have any sound, but I think it's funny. This is that. You can tell by the like the sunlight. It, this is the end of the day. He's coming home. This is the last thing. I just thing. pictured jer on this one. Oh, I haven't seen this. I think all of us would do this exact same thing. I know Casey's probably done it. He's obviously going to do something awesome. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah. just the, oh, he just KOs yeah. the trunk that fern. <laughs> that fern was just a little too low on the front porch. Uh, Shouldn't have been standing there. All right. Oh God, this is definitely. Probably this seems. You have some just, boat ramp I, issues. I'm not, I just saw a boat and I was I like, love, "Oh, I love the boat." I'm not an trails. avid boater, but tell me if this is the right way. One way to launch a boat. One way to launch a boat at Lake Pleasant. Oh God! Can't back up a trailer. You get it close. Look at that, the gel coat. Yeah, just, it's just on the <laughs> pavement. <laughs> Bring it to Roadster Shop. They'll yeah. paint it. That doesn't seem. Uh, the water looks beautiful, though. Where is that? Like Pleasant? I don't know where that's that's at. somewhere on the West Coast. I don't know. It doesn't. You'd expect that kind of behavior out of the, like the West Coast. All right. This is a little. This takes a little, little longer to get there, but it's worth the uh, popcorn out. It's oh, worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lady with a pinata. Wait for it. 
Lady with a pinata. So. so this is what you don't do. Just got a good cut. This is what you don't do. Nope, nope. Don't nope, do it. No, nope, don't. Oh, <laughs> It's right to the back just of the head. Fucking Pantera's grandma <laughs> right in the head. Grandma my was bad, saying don't. Bad memories of my wife. I think she did that to me a couple times. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. We were watching this. <laughs> we were watching a lot of things. We were watching this prior to recording. Jeremy thinks that this is Dude, somehow I, I CGI. Don't know. He thinks it's watch watch carefully. I've spent have, a lot of time on the go-kart yeah. track. I've caused We've a lot I've tried I've, like hell to get here. Dude, I've caused a lot of accidents. I've caused a couple of flips in my day. I just no. think this I've never was, seen anything I think like this. Flip, just yeah, the I right, flipped. the right time. I flipped Sam Jamerson and Jay uh, Gustafson. And, uh, Jay 2000, Gustafson. 2001. Jay Gustafson was there. Was he? Yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> yeah, in Wheeling, 01. Jamerson. Uh, that was a hell trap. On his head. Well, yeah. let's let's watch and see. I think that this was just right place, wrong time, but. Oh, <laughs> he stuck it. <laughs> yeah. Landed it. Ah, uh, dude, I, the sound effects are fucking yeah. awesome. I don't know, man. I'm on the fence on that one. Send it. It's a great wreck. Do you, sure. Have you ever, we ever told the Louisville go kart story? We never did. There's a go kart track in Louisville. Oh, oh is there? It's yeah. an awesome go kart track. Oh, yeah. Fuck it's huge. huge. It's dude. It's, it's basically like bring goggles though. Yeah. But they frown. The pros. They frown upon bumping. They do not like the bumping. Yeah. It's like a two mile track. It's long. Yeah, what it's do they do? Cart, walk cart, the cart whole country. way back. Cart country. They <laughs> frown on bumping. Yeah, you don't just call it cart country for nothing. Like that's a big track. Yeah, it's huge. And when they shut the carts off, when they tell you the you're done. End, they mean you're done. Yeah, we had to walk back two miles. Aren't there? Aren't there like the electric ones? And you know, I thought there's some in Chicago. Yeah, they've like got this. the electric ones here. We've done them. These are are not. This is this is what you would expect from Cart Country 2Ks in Louisville. This is not the electric carts that's, in downtown that's, that's, Chicago. That's, that's, that's Cart <laughs> Cart Country spelled like custom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, this is not even really that funny. It's just something that Jeremy wants. That's a genius invention. Wait. Car vent accessory for safety <laughs> while driving around on a hot summer day. This one of a kind breezy upgrade device will magnetically snap onto your car's vent and features our directional head that easily slides under your shorts. <laughs> then just crank up the fan speed and live your best life feeling crisp all summer long. So basically, it's called Chris. the Jewel Cooler. The 3D um, Magic Mike is working on printing up one. And that goes on your AC vent, the little hose. It's basically, since new cars don't have. Uh, good grief vent windows vent windows uh which are you know also known as cod coolers then you know today's day and age doesn't know anything about you know hitting that vent window throwing that leg up and letting it go blow down the shorts so they've got a <laughs> that's that's exactly the way i mean that's what vent windows are for right yeah that is for smoking yes. no well it's yeah, for, i think they were really invented for smokers okay. yeah i think you're right you've never done that kick those vent windows mm. around Get that get that leg thing. kicked up just right. I think so. It's below right down on those the shorts. Five and a half inch inseam shorts. Oh yeah, that that'll make it even nicer. All right. Uh, you guys, you guys. Usually, laugh. anything with vent windows, you're trying to worry about way other mechanical problems on the vehicle than at least mine. Than yeah. Hit it in your ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just worried about sealing that fucker up. Yeah. That thing's just gonna be whistling for its eternity. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've seen this video around actually a good bit this last week. Uh but somebody sent it a little hard. Somebody wants to be uh. the world is gonna run. Somebody wants Seen cross the finish What's line. That, again? Like a UTV that. or something? Yeah, it looks like a UTV, uh, some type of race. It didn't seem to be going that fast, but it looks like is that just throttle out instantly as soon as you hit the ramp? I don't know what that is. It's a shit show. Yeah, that's just bad luck. Please tell me you never do that with the sand rail. No, yeah. definitely not. Not with that Wagner motor. No, the, yeah, the sand rail jumps nose up, and that thing always. It'll. Speaking of, it'll. While I'm here. That 
Fucker, we could throw it back in my SS. We got to get that thing faster. We do. We got to get that. What is it? Three. What's the meter on that Whipple? Three eight. Three eight. We need, need the three the big eight. Boy. We need the three eight. It's interesting. We're going to downgrade on size and go up on the horsepower side of the thing. That's wild. This, you can just tell that this means. This looks like something. Is, I can tell you right now, this looks like something we would do. And Jeremy Carey from Ironclad yeah, did it. I was going to say that. <laughs> so. It does look like Jeremy's driving, riding. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in his defense so, didn't have a bmx he did everything he was supposed oh, to oh yeah do. he sent that that's, so that's like a divvy bike or something in don't chicago jump a rental bike he did not have the bmx don't jump a bike were. you've borrowed either this uh i know from experience this doesn't seem as bad until the three seconds after It's, that's the throttle hang. He never lifted. I give him that. He that, never that, lifted. That's staged. You think so? Yeah. There's some you stupid just, people out there. You don't just accidentally find the launching ramp head on, like full throttle. There's some stupid people out there. That was an expensive We've flown with boat. them. There's some stupid people. You ever been there. on a plane? You've been in an airport? Fucking with planes. <laughs> uh, this is one Phil submitted. I like a little quick whiskey. I can throttle. already see a, uh, We got a moped here. Oh! <laughs> Showing off. Just, boom. I have to tell you. Alive, alive, alive. Dead. I don't know if it's the mopeds, the foreign country, or the T-bone, or all of it. I think but it's, it's the sandals. I think it's the sandals, dude. Like, anything you do in, like, leather sandals or Tevas makes it look better. I just think it's funny. That was a compliment for you, Josh, because you wear... Tevas regularly and just looks better. That's something that will not ever stick. You know, I'm not a sandal type of guy. Uh, oh, and last but not least, pretty sure this guy. I think we dead. took this off of Faces of Death. Yeah, this we went to Family <laughs> Video. I don't know if this. And in the back room of Family Video, we got a VHS, and this is Faces. We'll of let death. Casey be the judge, but there's no way this guy lived, unfortunately. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> you're a dead guy he's oh, oh it's, fuck oh, oh, it's right. honestly not that bad of a wreck i've been in some pretty bad golf cart yeah wrecks, that roof took his neck yeah, off dude, right off that thing just it's like a it guillotine. just ragdolled him yeah i think when they lift that up they halved him he's <laughs> they lift it up and they just put it right back <laughs> down yeah oh holy well, Yes, that was wow. That was violent. <laughs> well, that does it for whiskey throttle. Again, any listeners, viewers, anybody that has any submissions, DM us, email us, send it to us on Instagram via however you would like to. Hashtag oil and whiskey podcast, and we might use some of your videos. Yeah, fire, fire, keep the videos rolling. Keep the listener questions rolling. Oh yeah. Listener questions. We're going to do probably another little call to action on that here in the next few weeks as well. Those are always great. They're great, and we've been throwing out some merch. Yep. The last ones. A couple we were... of guys won some pretty cool stuff. A couple of knives, a couple of hats, a couple yeah. of shirts. Thanks Don't again, be shy. everybody, for listening to Oil & Whiskey with the Roadster Shop. An Ironclad Original. If you like the show, be sure to leave us a rating and a review. Thanks again to our guest, Casey Wegner. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>